is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. A conference is a celebration of knowledge and sharing it on a larger platform for further advancement in the field of research. Research not only adds fame to one's name, but it also specially adds thirst to explore more contribution to the community in this challenging and ever-changing world. I would like to start today's event by inviting dignitaries on the stage. Firstly, I would like to invite on the stage principal and organizer of this international conference, Dr. J.B. Devade, sir, a man who has led this institute to various landmarks. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Devade, sir, with a warm round of applause. Thank you very much, sir, for gracing this event. Next, I would like to call upon stage IQC coordinator and head of Department of Physics, Professor J. A. Borse, sir. As you know, he is the leader par excellence. Welcome, sir. Next, I would like to call on stage Dr. K. M. Ranjalkar, sir, head Department of Botany and convener of this e-conference. Dr. Ranjalkar, sir. Thank you, sir. And finally, I would like to invite Dr. K. F. Charke, sir, head Department of Chemistry and co-convener of this event on stage. Thank you so much, sir. Light symbolizes victory over darkness and defeat of ignorance. It marks the beginning of auspicious moments and events. I request the dignitaries on the stage to do the honor. And also, I request them to garlanding the photo ops in the Gargi Baba. Thank you very much all. Please occupy those places. Now, we would like to felicitate the dignitaries on the dais with flower of bouquet, with flower bouquets. For that, I would like to request Professor Borse, sir, to felicitate Principal Dr. J.B. Devade, sir. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. Arhav, sir, to present bouquet of flowers to Professor J.A. Borse, sir. Now, I would like to request Professor J.D. Kanade, sir, to felicitate Dr. K.M. Ranjalkar, sir. Finally, I request Dr. Aryan Khade, sir, to felicitate Dr. K. F. Sherke, sir. Thank you, sir. On this beautiful morning, I, Mr. Amardip Zada, is pleased to welcome each and every one of you to this brainstorming multidisciplinary online international conference on Current Innovations in Sciences, that is CIS 2022, organized by Faculty of Science in collaboration with Internal Quality Assurance Cell, that is IQC, 
of late Pushpadevi Patil Arts and Science College Resort, District Washim, Maharashtra. This eve is organized on the occasion of superannuation of our beloved principal, Dr. J.B. Devadesar. In the very beginning, on behalf of organizers, I would express my heartfelt thanks to visionary, honorable president of our Jivan Mikas Shikshan Sansta, Sri Baba Rauji Karse Patil sir, for his continuous support and guidance. I also extend my thanks to the secretary of our society and newly elected Washim Jilla Parishad member, Sri Amit Bhav Karse Patil sir, for his encouragement throughout support and guidance. With the upsurge of science and technology, our lives have been revolutionized much. I ever, the ever increasing concern of maximizing the outputs and minimizing the distance between different disciplines of science has been the matter of discussion all over the world. And today we have invited eminent resource person from different disciplines of sciences to share their knowledge and research experience with us. Our resource persons are well-known international scientists they are from very prestigious institutes from Japan, Saudi Arab, and University of Kolapur. We, we also have invited papers and oral presentation on the same, that is multidisciplinary science papers. To welcome is to show honor. To welcome is to establish integrity. I invite Professor J.A. Borse, sir, head Department of Physics and IQC coordinator of our college to give his introductory speech. Professor Borse, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning to one and all. It is my the great pleasure and honor for me to welcome you at one day international e-conference on current innovations in sciences 2022. I warmly welcome our patron, Honorable Sri Baba Raji Patil, sir, president of the Jeevan Vikas Shikshan Sansta Resort, Sri Amit Patil, sir, secretary of the Jeevan Vikas Shikshan Sansta Resort, and our principal, respected Dr. J.B. Devade, sir, Today's eminent speakers, Dr. Pankaj M. Koinkar, sir, from the Tokushima University, Japan, Professor Dr. S. D. Delekar, sir, from Shivaji University, Kolapur, Dr. C. U. Murade, sir, from the New York University, Abu Dhabi, and our keynote speaker, Professor Dr. A. S. Aswar, sir, from the Santa Gadge Baba, Amravati University, Amravati, convener, Dr. K. M. Ranjaka, sir, co convener, Dr. K. F. Shalke, sir, and all organizing members, and all my dear participant from over the country. Actually, this conference is conducting on the way of super innovation of our principal, respected Dr. J.B. Devade, sir. This is the first international conference in the history of this college, which is conducting on the digital platform in line with the social distancing norm due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation. The theme of this one day international conference is the current innovation in sciences of various fields, such as physical sciences, chemical sciences, life sciences, mathematical sciences, and nanomaterial sciences. This conference is being conducted jointly with the science department and internal quality assurance sale. In the conference, there will be the three invited talks of the eminent speaker and one keynote addresses. We, have, uh, we plan to have published the participant papers in UGC approved journal. We received the various research paper for the publication from the participant over the country. This created an opportunity for the participant to hear of the recent development and exchanging idea of the research field. In the past 10 years, a lot of things has been changed in a research field. So we hope this one day international e-conference will help to expand the research knowledge and adapt the best research technique around the world. The main outcome of this conference is to aware about the current innovation in sciences. I hope we enjoy in the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your introductory remark. After the welcome, I would like to invite Professor Dr. A.S. Aswasar, Department of Chemistry, Santa Garge Baba Amrati University, Amrati, for his keynote address. Before that, I would like to introduce, sir, shortly. Professor Aswasar is Professor and Head of Department of Chemistry, Santa Garge Baba Amrati University, Amrati. He is also ex chairman of Board of Studies. He has also held the position of coordinator of Avishkar for more than 12 years. Sir has published many research articles, the counts 192, with his 33 years experience of teaching. Sir has many awards to his credits, 
And with this short introduction to sir, I would like to hand over the dais to A.S. Aswa sir for his keynote speech. Sir, am I audible? Sir, am I audible? Yes, sir, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, good morning to all viewers and listeners. My greetings to all of you. Honorable Chairman of this uh, international event and my esteemed friends, Principal Dr. Jankiram Devode, respected chief guest, distinguished participants, resource persons, my teacher colleagues, and dear student friends. I'm very happy to see you all together on these virtual platforms. At the outset, I must express my sincere thanks uh, towards the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts, some of you pertaining to the recent innovation in the sciences. So friends, uh, indeed, it's a matter of great pleasure that colleagues and students uh, of the principal Devode sir has organized an international event on the EVA office superannuations. As we know, the professor Devode is a devoted teacher an excellent administrator and extraordinary host, as well as a dependable friends, which is a rare combination. So it's a really, uh, I may say the very pleasant as well as a memorable events for all of us that in a college, such kinds of event has been organized on the way of the superannuation of some teachers. So as a sincere, dynamic and brilliant teachers, Professor Devode has made an impact on the academic life of students and inspire a generation of college students to engage themselves in the pursuit of knowledge and excellence, which is the ultimate goal of education. As an educational administrator, he also showed an extraordinary qualities like efficiency, firmness, as well as politeness also, and therefore, he is a very popular teacher, administrator amongst his colleagues and students by virtue of his sincerity and proficiency in his subjects. Professor Devode has gifted an art of explaining a most difficult topic in a very simple and illustrative manner, which always keeping the students spellbound for the entire duration of their class, which many a times extended a couple of hours also. There are very few teachers like Professor Devode who can create a such a deep impact with mesmerizing effect on the student. Professor Devode involvement in teaching has been a total. He has been an ideal teacher who is commanded not only the deep respect and regard, but a passionate love from his entire student fraternities also. On this occasion, I must mention his better half contribution in his success of long 38 years of academic as well as administrative experience. As all we aware, as a colleague, as a friend, I must mention here that the Professor Devode is from a very small village like Mali from the days Taluka Maker. And he completed his BSc from the Sri Sivaji Science College Chikli and moved for his post graduation toward the Nagpur University. And we met each other since long back, of allow, around 39 years. And I had an very good experiences and very good memories also. But it is very difficult for me to mention on this occasion as our occasion is a little bit different also. So on the success of every human being, on the success of every person, there is a lady and she is none other than the better half of Principal Devode sir. She must have spent many days without his company, but she always supported him in every activity, whether it is a academic activity, curricular, co-curricular, as well as administrative activity. And therefore, on this occasion, she must deserve credit equivalent to the contribution of Principal Devode sir. So friends, as all you might have realized while working with the principal Devode, and as a friend, I had an 
several opportunity that the professor devde is very simple accessible persons and always ready to help his colleagues friends as well as student and sometimes he went it out of way also to help his colleagues and students about all these professional quality he is an excellent human being and always follow a humility modesty dignity as well as humanitarian concerns its sincerity wisdom and commitments are not only reflected on his in his life but it is visible on his face also so i extend my heartiest congratulation to professor j b devde on these occasions and i wish him every success in his future endeavors and i pray the almighty god that professor devde may have the very long peaceful as well as prosperous life with sound health years to come so that he would continue to guide us help us for the next many more years let us come to the university education on these occasions uh, the role of university education as we know to create preserve and dissemination of the knowledge and at the same time it instill the professionalism confidence and leadership amongst its student and in this regard the organization of such event is very very important and this will definitely create a very good i may say the motivation inspirations among the young and enthusiastic minds friends as all we aware the chemistry represent a unique positions among the different discipline of science chemistry sustainability and innovation three key components are for the future of our society chemistry is an essential tool in our campaign to protect and preserve our environments biodiversity and natural resources against further degradations it is also a primary driver both for the growth as well as the sustainable development of the world economy and the well being and quality of the life of the citizens as we know the chemical industry in india generate almost 13% of the country's total export and it's continuously growing and at present annually it about 12% and therefore it is important that student and teachers like us made aware of the innovation in the chemical sciences with the help of leading scientists those who are pursuing their research innovation and creativity in the area of chemical sciences friends frontiers of education are changing every day and we are moving from the knowledge based society to a society of innovations and thus research become one of the important components of higher education today one of the indicator for the measurement of the potential of any educational institute its research activity and quality of teaching so scientific research is necessary for progress of any nations but as we know the basic research alone will society prosper and country progress but at the same time there are several challenges before the chemists and these are nothing but to solve the society's food energy clean water medicine and vaccine protection of our environment and cultural heritage and economic development so it is a big responsibility towards the teaching fraternity and scientific community also to consider these aspect as far as for the next 50 years of the society requirements are concerned at present the protection of environment is a huge concern for the society and not only the environment is getting affected by the human endeavors but this also has the detrimental effect on the human health as we know over the last two century chemistry has changed our daily lives more than any other of sciences chemistry make our world more colorful more efficient more reliable as well as safer also and therefore such kinds of event is very useful to continue the 
second generation get involved in the academic excellence also and on this occasion i must congratulates that principal devde and his entire team taken this covid pandemic situation not as a difficulty but he utilize as an opportunities and there are only few teacher administrator like principal devde always trap the opportunity as we know the pessimistic always look the difficulty while optimistic find always the find opportunity in every difficulty and always keep him attached with the academic world not only the maharashtra but throughout the india also and therefore principal devde has a very wide network throughout the country and i must say that he will continue such kinds of academic world for the years to come and he will get involved himself throughout his life with the academic world to continue the science education also so as a teacher as a optimistic teacher i always feel that our hopes and dream should be like our hair and nails no matter how many times they get cut they never stop growing so we should take this kind of inspirations as we know that chemistry itself is a life so condense your friends burn your enemies filter your doubt precipitate your sorrows your prayers your tears and then i am sure that you will get a real crystal of polyjoy and so if you consider the central principle of chemistry in every walk of our life as a chemistry teacher i am sure that you will be very happy as well as satisfied person in your life also so it is said that real teachers and researcher never retires and i am sure that the principal devde will continue his association with our academic world and get involved himself to attach and to make the progress and development of our vidarbha region particularly and in general entire amravati university while working with principal devde during his tenure as a board of studies member i had an excellent memories i may say so we has taken a very hard efforts to reframe the syllabus of our university and i must congratulate i must mention on this occasion because of its dedicated efforts our chemistry syllabus not only the pg but ug also get enhanced and this is the fruits or i may say the outcomes of his efforts that our several student getting clear pass net set as well as get examination also at the same time several student also get qualify in the mpsc as well as upsc examination also so friends there are only few people like principal devde and as a friends as a i may say the junior colleague of principal devde i always consider my privilege as well as honor to associate with the principal devde and instead of talking much more so i must congratulate the principal devde's entire team and i may say the administrative uh, person particularly the president of his educational institute secretary as well as treasurer also because very short of short span of time his college has or a name and fame at the national level also several of his student occupy the position in the university team as well as national team as well as in the international team because all these needs a motivation inspirations and therefore behind all this success i am sure that principal devde and his entire team will have they are also in future too so such i may say the excellence and uh, such kinds of academic excellence will perform such a ruler based college ruler based area student also how it difficult we know because all we are from the ruler based background and therefore we know there are several difficulty while getting the education at such rural level also and i had an experience that principal devde has helped the several of his student while working as a founder head in the jija mata mahavidyalaya buldhana and he spent more than 32 years of his i may say the dynamic leadership and during his tenure as head at jija mata mahavidyalaya buldhana also he acquired the several facility for research and developments he took the pain to get the research center approved research center from the university and therefore several student uh, got their doctoral degree from the buldhana also and most of my colleagues 
became a professor at a such rural college at Bhutana level also. And credit goes to my esteemed friend Devade's efforts and it is its positiveness towards the progress and development. Even most of the time he used to call me while discussing something as far as the chemistry laboratories are concerned. The approach towards solving any problem is very humble. Olides, and therefore I like the approach attitude of principal Devode towards the uh, problems as well as how to resolve it. Even sometime uh, I had an experience that during the, some difficult time of my career, of my life also, several times he came over, over to Amravati and just discuss and always told me, sir, you don't worry, we are there to solve problem. So friends, I am really that very happy that such friends such, I may say, the senior friend are rarely found. And I'm lucky that I got a friend like Principal Devode uh, in my career, in my life, in my academic also. So such people will never retire from their service because in India, it is the only country where as soon as you get superannuated, you will be free from all the academic activity. But in the Western country, such kinds of approach is not. You might have aware that during the 219 Nobel Prize that lithium ion batteries. Geoffrey scientists told that I should not wait to die also, I should continue the work. So if you look such kinds of good inspirations, we'll also find a very good solution for all kinds of problem and will become excellence in our area. And therefore, I must congratulate the entire team of Principal Devode sir. And once again, I thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to say few things as a keynote speaker. And at the same time, I must thank to all viewers for joining virtually with us for this program also. And I wish a grand success of this international webinar and look forward for the exciting possibilities also. So, Coming together is beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. So such kind of pillar, having the late Kushpadevi Patil College, and I'm sure that all you will, I may say, the you know, all the memories and work with the Professor Principal Devode sir, and we'll continue your association also. We will always continue association. So I once again wish him a very long, happy, peaceful life with sound hills so that he would continue to serve the society in future too also. So friends, thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for taking time from your busy schedule for the keynote address. After this, moving on to the first session of our conference, I'd like to call on Dias, Dr. S.S. Chobe, sir, Department of Chemistry, Loknite Venkatra, Hire College, Panchoti Nashik, to introduce our eminent scientist and first research person, Dr. T.M. Koinkar sir from Tokushima University, Japan. Dr. S.S. Chobe sir. You are unmuted now, sir. Chobe, sir. Hello, Chobe, sir. Please ask him to unmute. He, he is unmuted. Hello. Hello, Chobe, sir.
due to some technical error with uh, Dr. S.S. Chobe, sir. I would like to invite Professor Borse, sir, to introduce Coinka, sir. Professor Borse, sir. Thank you, sir. Due to some tech, uh, technical reason, uh, Dr. Pankaj Koinkar, sir, from the Tokushima University, Japan. Dr. Koinkar, sir, started his research career in a junior research fellow at Department of Physics in 1999 and received a PhD in Physics, Material Science in 2005 from the North Maharashtra University, India. After getting the PhD, he moved to the Department of Physics, University of Pune, India to work as a uh, research associate from uh, April 2005 to September 2005. He subsequently went to Korea University, Seoul, South Korea for postdoctoral study from the October 2005 to September 2006. After one year postdoctoral uh, study in South Korea, he joined Center for the International Cooperation in Engineering Education. The University of Tokushima, Japan in March 2007 working as an assistant professor till March 2016. He became an associate professor in Department of Optical Science, Tokushima University in April 2016. His research area include two-dimensional nanostructure, laser ablation in liquid photocatalysis, field emission microscopy, sensors, and engineering education. He has published uh, more than 96 research paper in peer review international journal and got two award for the paper presentation in international conference he has been working as a reviewer for more than 100 scope of journal from the elsewhere holland american society of chemistry us world scientific publication singapore he is recipient of the junior research fellowship through the chief minister fund from the north maharashtra university jalgaon India and Senior Research Fellowship as well as Research Associate from CSIR, New Delhi, India. Thank you. Dr. Pankaj Poinkar, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello? sir. Yes, yes okay, sir. Yes, okay, sir. okay, okay. Thank you. First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Principal Devde sir for his long career and best wishes for his future endeavor. Before starting my talk, I would like to also thank Dr. Borse sir and organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to share my experience of research in the field of two-dimensional nanomaterial. Today, I'm going to give a talk on liquid-based direct exfoliation of two-dimensional nanostructures. Myself is Pankaj Koinkar. I'm working as an associate professor as well as vice director for the Center of International Research Educational Cooperation in Tokushima University. This is the outline of my talk. Today, I'm going to cover this topic. I will introduce uh, Tokushima University and something about me in just two, three minutes. And then I will come to the basic of two-dimensional materials. And I will explain what is the laser ablation process. After that, how we have prepared the two-dimensional nanostructure. I will explain a few examples of these two-dimensional nanostructures. And then finally, I will talk about the optoelectrical properties. We are doing the research on various property, electrical property, optical property, as well as some kind of physical properties. So basically, we prepare the two-dimensional nanostructures and we see its optoelectrical property like field emission or photocatalysis or sensor-related devices. Today, I'm going to talk on the synthesis of two-dimensional nanostructures, and then I will look at its field emission as well as field effect transistor properties. 
So first of all, I will give a brief explanation about Tokushima University. Uh, you already hear about me, so now I am not going to talk more detail about me. But first 30 years of my life, I have spent in India. After that, one year in Korea. And now, from last 16 years, I am working in Tokushima University. This is the location of Tokushima University here. This is the whole map of Japan. And Japan is made up of four different islands. This is called as Hokkaido, this is Honshu, this is Kyushu, and this one is a Shikoku. On this small island, we are located, and the location of Tokushima University is here. The nearest airport for Tokushima is Kansai International Airport. The Kansai International Airport is about 180 kilometers from Tokushima. So if you have a chance to visit Japan, you can always welcome to see our universities. This is the aerial picture of Tokushima University. This is the main administrative buildings. And these are various department, uh, mechanical, chemical, biological. These are information. And right now I'm sitting in this building, optical science building at the fourth floor. Basically we have seven department in our university, civil, mechanical, applied chemistry, biological, electrical, computer, and optical system engineering. I belong to this department. We, have, we are about 956 teacher and 9,000 student. So almost 10 to one student ratio. We are having 638 international student. So these days uh, students are taking the online classes because of the COVID-19, they are not able to come to Tokushima directly. And non-teaching staff is 1,400. We have various collaboration with 92 universities from 27 different countries. Most of the universities belong to Asia. And we have also signed MOU with four Indian universities. And those universities, Pune University, Aurangabad University, North Maharashtra, and Bharti University. Two vice chancellor, uh, one from North Maharashtra, another from Aurangabad visited Tokushima University before six years. And in last 10 years, about 142 participants from various universities or colleges from Maharashtra visited Tokushima University. Most of them were a student for uh, visited Tokushima for various purposes, such as summer school or some short term programs. Now I will come to the today's topic that is two dimensional materials. You might heard about the graphene and you might have seen these pictures. They got the Nobel Prize in 2010 for their groundbreaking research on graphene. Actually, they have invented the graphene in 2004. They published four paper, first paper on the graphene in 2004. And after six years, that is during uh, their research of six years, they have received a Nobel Prize. So within six years, they got the Nobel Prize for their research on graphene. So these are the two Russian scientists, but working in UK and they got Nobel Prize. This was the beginning of two dimensional material and graphene is the first laboratory made two dimensional material. After 2010, researcher started to do the research on various two dimensional nanostructures. Graphene is the first two dimensional material. And of course, you are also preparing graphene yourself, but you are not realizing. Whenever you rub the pencil, whenever you rub the pencil on any plain paper, what you are doing, you are putting your force to create the graphene. However, we cannot see any nanostructure by our eyes. So this 
pencil is nothing but a graphite and graphite can convert into the graphene as you know the structure of graphite this is the single sheet of carbon atom and these sheets are connected to each other if they are connected to each other they are this is the structure of graphite but if we break this then this single sheet is nothing but a graphite graphite is made up of carbon and graphene is also made up of carbon the only difference is in their structures now as i told you that the first material is the graphene but after the graphene there are several combination we can prepare for synthesizing two dimensional material there are 88 possible combination out of 88 almost half of the combinations are stable material now how we can prepare these two dimensional nanostructure you can select any transition metal from these group and then you can have one chalcogenide atom from this group and try to make a combination for example you can take mo from here and s from here that is molybdenum sulfide instead of molybdenum you can take tungsten you can take bismuth or you can take s or you can take indium and then combine them with this sulfur selenide or terylene in this way we can prepare several combination molybdenum sulfide and tungsten sulfide are the more popular two dimensional material after the graphene so why researcher started to do the research on various two dimensional material the first is the carbon these are all carbon atoms they are connected and making a hexagonal ring this structure of graphene is a two dimensional structure molybdenum sulfide is also two dimensional cell two dimensional material but in case of molybdenum there is one molybdenum atom and two sulfur in case of graphene or a carbon atom in case of boron nitride you can see the structure look almost same however in graphene only carbon atom but in case of boron nitride there is a boron and nitrogen atom then these three structures are two dimensional structure then what is the difference what is the difference whether they conduct electricity or not graphene almost because of its zero band gap looks like a metal and it can conduct electricity easily molybdenum has certain band gap but it act as a semiconductor and boron nitride is totally insulator material but it can be used for thermal resist so each two dimensional material has a different application that's why the researchers are preparing various combination of these two dimensional materials and so far now we can find many research paper right from synthesis to the application various optoelectronic application or energy related devices so synthesis various methods and several property that can be used for the particular applications so these are few example you can have a single graphene or you can have graphene with mos2 or even hexagonal boron nitride so there are composite material there are single material there are binary material that can be used for various application now coming to the laser ablation process 
we are preparing the two dimensional material using the laser ablation process. Now, what is laser? Of course, we know the simple light is a white light, but that white light is a simple bulb made up of various wavelengths. There are all type of color available in this white color. You can see in different direction. There is no certain direction in any direction or light. In case of laser, a particular wavelength has been set and particular wavelength means it will show us a certain color. For example, if we are using this green color, then it will have 432 nanometer wavelength. One color, one wavelength. And it is unidirectional. It is unidirectional. This property is very important to create the nanostructures because you can focus the laser on the bulk material and you can get the uniform structure of nanomaterials. So in case of laser ablation in liquid, what basically we are doing? We are taking a organic liquid, it may be water, it may be medium, uh, it may be ethanol, it may be methanol, or it may be isopropyl alcohol, hexane. There are various combination of solvent material. And in this liquid material, we are putting the bulk powder. So here we put the bulk powder as a sample. Then we close the beaker or glass bottle. And after that, we irradiate with a NDAC laser. Now this laser is a nanosecond laser, NDAC laser, having the pulse of 10 nanoseconds. So every 10 nanosecond, one pulse is going on. And its power is about 50 millijoules, 500 milliwatt, 500 milliwatt. The beam size is five millimeter. And deposition time is depend on the bulk material. Sometimes deposition time is 20 minutes, sometimes one hour, sometimes two hours. So this is the simple setup. After the laser ablation for certain time, this bulk material, which is in micrometer size, can convert into the nanometer, can convert into the nanometer. And here we are using this green laser that is having the 532 nanometer wavelength. So in case of laser ablation, what kind of physical process happen so that you can get a nanostructures? We use laser energy. As I told you that laser has 50 millijoule power or 500 milliwatt power. That energy is used. When laser is ablated on the bulk sample, that energy can remove the some kind of material on the surface of bulk target material. So here, when he, the laser is on and ready to ablate the sample, this target material is in the liquid solution. So when this laser is irradiated or ablated, the surface of a target material, what happens? It creates a certain heat or plasma-like environment. And this heat area is created because of the laser energy. When this laser is ablated, at the surface, of course, there is a heat affected area plus shock wave are also created. Shock wave means like when you put, when you throw a stone into the river, you can see the circular rings around the stone. Similar kind of 
process you can find here. When laser hit the bulk material in the water medium or liquid medium, after creating the heat affected area, it can also create the shock wave and that shock wave are also responsible for creating the nanostructure. Of course, the plasma created within the heat affected area is the main contributor, but shock wave can also responsible for creating a small structure. So this is nanosecond laser. And in case of femtosecond laser, similar process happen, but the affected area is less because in picosecond or femtosecond, the power is little small, maybe 30 milliwatt or sometimes three milliwatt. Here, power is 500 milliwatt. So the area is less as well as shock wave is also less as compared to this nanosecond laser. And we can prepare the nanostructure ranges from 5 to 100 nanometer. Using this laser ablation, we have synthesized indium selenide nanocube. So what kind of experiment we have done? We took indium selenide powder, we put this powder into the water, and then irradiated by a nanosecond laser. This is the wavelength and this was the power of a laser. We irradiate this solution for first five minutes. Then another sample for 10 minutes, third sample for 15 minutes and fourth sample for 20 minutes. So there were four samples with four different time. Now why we choose these four different time? That I will answer you after few minutes. For first five minutes, when the bulk sample is irradiated, we observe some kind of nanorods or circular particle having the size about one micrometer. Then for 10 minutes, this rod is trying to convert into the circular particles. After 15 minutes, this circular particle started to take the shape, but shape is not uniform. They are having different sizes. And after 20 minutes, most of the cube are stabilized and their size is almost same. This is the effect of time. The bulk material is a sheet kind of material. Two-dimensional material means it is a sheet. The sheet is totally converted into the nanocube. Now, how this process has been happened because of the laser ablation? As we irradiate for first five minutes, there is a reduction of size from five minutes to 10 minutes. You can see visually by looking at the ACM pictures. Then from 10 to 15 minutes, there is a size reduction as well as transformation. The circular structure is trying to convert into the cubical form. And then there is a complete transformation. Why we choose this different timing? Because when we started the experiment. We started the experiment with 20 minute, 30 minute, and 60 minute. We have seen that 20 minute result was more better. 30 minute, the shape of the cube was not uniform. And after 30 minute, it was again trying to agglomerate and they become again the bigger circular nanoparticle. 60 minutes, most of the particles started to melt because of the high energy and long time. 
So 20 minutes was the good time. And then we want to understand how this process from bulk material to the nanocube is occurring within the liquid. So this was the bulk material. This is the TM pictures. So bulk material, you can see this is the sheet kind of structure and it is almost more than one micrometer. But this sheet is converted into the nanocube after 20 minutes. So you can see this cube. This is TM pictures. You can see the wall clearly here. When you tilt even this, and this is the another wall. This result was published in ACS Applied Nanomaterial in 2020. This is the bulk material, and this is the nanocube. After 20 minutes, you can see. Now you will see that the bulk material is a sheet kind of material, but it transform into the nanocube. So whether structure is intact or not, we have seen the structures is still intact by looking at its EDS spectra as well as TM images. So we find that the structure is still same as a bulk structure. Otherwise, we can also get a different form like alpha, beta, gamma, or neta phase of indium selenide. In our case, it was beta indium selenide. So this was the beta and this was also beta before and after. So the growth mechanism, we started with the sheet kind of material, bulk sheet having the particle size more than one micrometer. So laser ablation for five to 10 minutes convert the sheet into the rod kind of structures or spherical particle. So basically until the 10 minute, the role of laser ablation is to reduce the particle size. So you can see this formation of nanorod or nanoparticle after 10 minutes. And after 15 minutes, the transformation as well as size reduction is also took place. And we can see after 15 minutes, this circular particle is trying to convert into the cubical form, cubical form with different sizes, but after the 20 minute, it totally transformed into the nanocube. So laser ablation is depend on the timing also. You can select various time. When we started the experiment, usually we start the experiment with very small time, like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. If we are getting good result, 10 minutes, then we started to do it next experiment for 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. If you are getting good result, 20 minutes, then we can choose 5, 10, 15, 20, something like that. So here, the laser ablation reduces the size and creates some kind of small particles, and that small particle can convert into the nanocube form. Of course, the role of solvent here, it was water is also very important to make the stabilization of these nanocube. And we can get more uniform indium selenide nanocube. After that, we have done two properties of these material. One was photocatalyst property, another is a field emission. Now I'm just showing you the field emission. We have also done its photocatalytic property and published another paper on the same material. This was the field emission property. We get high current up to 2.7 uh, 
milliampere per centimeter. Now, when we check the bulk material, the bulk material current was almost 400 microampere, but 400 microampere. But for laser ablated sample, that is nanocube, it was 2.7 milliampere. Almost seven, eight times, it was the current density which was improved because of the nanostructure. So this increase in the current density is happened because of the nanometric scale. And there are more emitting sites where electron can tunnel easily from the wall of that cube material, nanocube material. So this nanostructure and the emitting site, more emitting site are available for emission is responsible for enhancement in the current density. Next property of a different material we also tried, optoelectrical properties in this optoelectrical property, of course, field emission as well as field effect transistor we have done. The another insulator material is bismuth selenide material. We have selected the bismuth selenide material and crush for two hours, repeated the same procedure. This is before and this is after laser ablation. You can see change in the color. And now bulk sample totally convert into the nano rocks. I think I am running out of time. So please tell me when I should stop if I'm taking too much time. So growth mechanism, there are two possibility of forming the nanostructure. One is bulk material is irradiated by laser and totally breaks into the small particles. Then this small particle agglomerate together and make a bigger nano. Another possibility is when laser is ablated on the bulk material, it can break into the several sheet that is we call as a fragmentation of sheet. In this example, it looks like there is a fragmentation, okay? There is a fragmentation because this sheet has been cut. This sheet has been cut because of the laser. And again, we have done its field emission property. The current is improved. Then we also study MOS2 material. Again, its property increases. We have published this in another papers. You can see when the laser ablation time increases, the size is also reduced. And the nanoparticle are become more separated. We have used two laser. One is nanosecond, another is femto laser second, uh, femtosecond laser. In case of nanosecond laser, most of the particles or structure, they are attached to each other. But in case of femtosecond laser, the sheets are well separated from each other. Now, depending on the property, if you are looking for the separated nanostructures, then femtosecond laser is the best choice. If you are looking for electrical property where you need that those particles should be connected to each other, then nanosecond is the good choice. Bismuth selenide nanostructure, we have tried field effect transistor behavior and it can show some kind of charge conduction due to the electron. Remember that bismuth selenide is a topological insulator material, but when it converts into the nanoscale, it acts as a semiconductor and gives some kind of charge conduction. Uh, ongoing research, we are doing the research on various uh, two-dimensional material, molybdenum, indium selenide, bismuth sulfide, tungsten sulfide, and 
we have prepared various material. Even we are trying to explore bismuth selenide material using various laser. And so far now we get various uh, nano particle, nano sheet, nano rods, nano cube, nano tubes, and nano ropes. However, we are trying to propose their growth mechanism. How these structure has been formed during the laser ablation that we are uh, looking for. And in future, we want to develop a two-dimensional nanostructure that can explore for the optoelectronic property. That will be our uh, core uh, research work in near future. I would like to thank our group leader, Professor Furbe, and my student, master student, and doctoral student for creating such nice data. Uh, I'm also organizing various spring school, summer school, and some joint uh, program between India and Japan. And there are two conferences uh, in Tokushima, which will be held this year and next year. If you are interested, please let me know. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. If you have any question, your question are welcome. You can get connected with me using this email or you can see my profile. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Koinkar, sir, for sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, I would like to ask audience to raise hands for questions and queries or to write the questions in the chat box. Your audience, ask your question in the chat box. Or either you can raise your hand so that we can unmute you to ask the question. I think there are no questions. Uh, such a nice presentation that there are no questions on this. Uh, let's move on to the next session of our conference. We are uh, very eager to hear the next research person. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. P.S. Phatak sir from our late Pushpadev Patel Arts and Science College on Dais to introduce the research person of this session, Dr. S.D. Delekar sir from Kolhapur University. Dr. Phatak sir, please. It's my privilege to introduce our today's resource person and my teacher, Professor Delikar sir. Professor S.T. Delikar sir is presently affiliated with Shivaji University, Kolhapur as a professor in Department of Chemistry. He received his master's degree in chemistry from Shivaji University in 2001 and his PhD in 2006 from the same university. He also qualified the NEED and SET exams. He got summer research fellowship from IISC Bangalore. He got the most prestigious Raman fellowship for postdoctoral study in Florida State University, Florida, USA, under the supervision of Nobel laureate Sir Harold Proto and Professor Naresh Dalalsa. <clears throat> he was head of department at Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University subcampus Usmanabad. He is a rector of Boys Hostel number two at Shivaji University, Kolhapur. He is a coordinator of University Industry Interaction Sale and Research Colocom at Shivaji University. He has granted one Indian patent and three more filled for the grant. He is a member of various academic and research communities 
like member of american chemical society member of marathi vidyan parishad member of international cell and academic autonomous sea committee of shivaji university kolhapur he is a senate and standing committee member of shivaji university also annual Lecture member Lecture of Lecture. international solar energy society <clears throat> germany he is member of board of studies in chemistry he got various awards and honors like raman fellowship global ambassador at florida state university usa young scientist from dst srf from indian academy of science bangalore best presentation awards in many conferences he has delivered many lectures <coughs> as a close person in various universities and colleges he is an author of four book publications and as author or co-author he has contributed more than 75 national and international journal publications he has completed nine major and minor research projects funded by various funding agencies like ugc dst and universities under his able guidance 10 students awarded their phd degree and seven more students are working for their phd degree he has presented research in various national and international conferences with this brief introduction i would like to invite professor delekar sir for their talk on the topic that is innovations in energy technologies and biomedical studies welcome sir doctor professor delekar sir sir does it visible yes sir yes okay so first of all i am thankful to the organizers uh, for giving me an opportunity uh, to deliver the talk uh, on the topic of my interest so <clears throat> uh as we know that we are here for this uh, internationally conference on topic uh, current innovations in science uh, sciences uh, 2022 organized by the faculty of science science and iqsc uh, led pushpa devi party lords uh, and science college okay resort so already uh, my student and the faculty energetic faculty uh who okay has given my introduction uh, so i am thankful to him also as well as uh, uh, dr okay, adinath badar for giving me an opportunity so okay in this talk i am going to uh, focus on the innovations in energy technologies and the biomedical studies so all these uh, especially research innovations uh, going in my okay research laboratory so already uh, Okay, I, I am okay. One or two slides I am uh, putting for my universities where I am working. So few participants might have visited the very beautiful campus of our university. And uh, just one minute. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, my university is placed at uh, the. the head quarter of kolhapur district and uh, so this one is the administrative building of my university and at present we have very green and beautiful campus having uh, filled is more than 800 okay, acres and if you are going to see the recent okay, uh, the credentials assured by my university 
uh, recently uh, in the fourth cycle, which was held in uh, 20 March 2021, uh, we uh, received NAC A double plus grade with CCP of 3.52. And uh, second important credential uh, regarding the best management practices going at my the campus, and third uh, regarding the uh, the uh, research endeavors, especially as per uh, the US uh, news and world report, uh, which was published in December uh, 2019. Sivaj University is one of the best okay, global university in India. Yeah. Uh, for material science and uh, if you're going to consider the rank having the rank is again okay, the 10th rank so these are okay, the few uh, the the uh, the credentials of my university so along with that uh, if uh, if we are going to consider my research endeavors uh, basically uh, in these three uh, thrust areas uh, my group is working uh, functional nanocomposites for energy technologies, uh, then functional nanocomposites for biomedical studies, and nano okay, material for chemical transformation. And for today's uh, the talk, I am uh, uh, focusing on energy technologies and the biomedical studies. So use of uh, functional nanocomposites for energy technologies and the bio biomedical the studies. So. Uh, if okay if you're going to consider okay, the research innovations of my the group uh, recently means especially in 2000 okay uh, 18 19 uh, i have okay been filed the four okay, indian patents and uh, two weeks okay back this okay one patent has been granted by the the indian patent office uh, remaining three okay these are in the uh, in the pipeline and uh, okay this one okay the fifth one uh, within a couple of okay, days, uh, I already I have uh, submitted the same provisionally, but the final version is to be submitted uh, within a couple of okay, days. So I am okay highlighting uh, uh, all these my uh, innovations in this okay, the today's talk, so especially in one okay, uh, uh, patent, which is granted by the, uh, the Indian patent office recently. Already we have used okay, different, we have synthesized okay, different composites for antibacterial paint formulation. Second, regarding the uh, uh, solar energy harvesting. Uh, this one regarding the uh, uh, photocatalytic reclamation of the silver present in pro photo okay, processing waste. So from the photo processing waste, we have reclaimed the silver. Uh, third, regarding the uh, sensing studies of the serotonin. And this one is uh, regarding the fifth one, which is uh, under process. This is regarding supercapacitor studies. So basically, uh, let us start with uh, what do you mean by okay, functional uh, nanocomposites? So as we know that, uh, simply uh, the composites means uh, the combination of two or uh, more heterophase metals. No doubt, uh, uh, means okay, you are aware that in our daily life, we are using different types of composites like, uh, you know, that okay, cement, then our bone structure, then different types of uh, the alloys, different types of uh, the mixed okay, uh, the oxides like glass, no doubt, like wood. So these are okay, the various okay, the composite metals, no doubt. Then what do you mean by nanocomposite? Nanocomposites means okay, uh, okay, you already you know that the composite means uh, the combination of two or more heterophase metal resulting in the composite. So among the okay, different the combined metal, at least one should be within the nano dimensions, nano dimensions. And uh, earlier, okay, uh, the speaker uh, who uh, revealed about when you tune uh, the material uh, into the nano, definitely the properties are to be okay, drastically enhanced. Uh, already during uh, his uh, talk, he focused on different uh, the chalukuja metals and how okay current density and other properties are to be or optical properties are to be enhanced. He has focused. Then uh, okay, uh, regarding functional nanocomposites means uh, functional nanocomposites means uh, the uh, nanocomposites having a wide range of uses or applications. No doubt means functional nanocomposites are simply defined as nanocomposites having multiple uses. Multiple uses. So uh, one can use okay the same metal for okay different okay the the applications means especially in environmental remediation in biomedical field one, one can use 
the same in the catalytic ke feel and many more no doubt and uh, then question na ke okay raise why okay these metals are to be used uh, in different okay the same metal in different applications so because because of having okay the tunable properties so this is a okay, very important one or having if you are going to compare the uh, uh, the properties of uh, especially the nano composites with their the starting or combined okay, ingredients usually we are usually getting the uh, somewhat extraordinary ordinary properties no doubt then uh, second ca case is that connected to through okay the chemical functional uh, chemical functionalization just let us consider okay if uh, if i have prepared the metal metal oxide composite and uh, miss let us see okay az zinc oxide az zinc oxide so this az zinc oxide okay, uh, one can use for okay biosensing studies the az zinc oxide one can use for okay uh, solar energy harvesting but okay only difference is that okay in uh, both cases the host the host metal is same but okay for biosensing okay studies one can use okay different types of either okay enzyme or non enzymatic okay uh, the functionalities on the host metal for okay is okay, especially in solar energy harvesting one can use okay different types of sensitizers to harvest the maximum so uh, okay connectivity okay is uh, one of the important aspect in the functional uh, nano composites and third like, regarding that okay, having this functional or the nano composites having somewhat enhanced okay, stability in comparison to their on uh, the starting the okay, ingredients and because of okay these uh, the okay different okay the properties functional and nano compounds have been okay, used in uh, the various okay fields no doubt so in my okay uh, this okay uh, uh, already i told i am focusing only on uh, uh, my the patent part uh, means my research endeavor which is which has been filed for the uh, the indian patent office so first is that functional nano composites for solar energy harvesting so okay what is the theme of this innovation the theme of this innovation is that already okay usually you know that uh, in case of uh, uh, solar energy harvesting or solar devices uh, there are okay, different generations based on the uh, the types of metals used uh, the first generation second generation then third generation and in case, especially in third generation uh basically okay okay uh, uh okay, there are okay sub uh there are different metals like okay pyroscite metals are used or disensitized are used or quantum dot okay, are, are used or inorganic organic hybrids are used but okay in most of these studies uh, the interconnectivity between different like, the components is the okay the lagging so through my okay, endeavors we have focus on the uh, electrostatic or chemical connectivity between the different components used for the solar devices no doubt and this is one aspect and second aspect is that we have developed the uh, the binder free thin film deposition technique and because in uh, solar energy okay uh, harvesting or during the designing of or during the fabrication of solar devices thin film okay deposition is one of the very important aspects so we have developed very simple and ease uh sim okay thin film deposition technique so these are the two uh, major aspects we have covered in our uh okay uh, this innovation so okay regarding this let us see so in this okay we have focus on okay uh, the tio2 and the okay, zinc oxide okay metals uh, basically okay this band okay picture reveals how this uh, zinc oxide and tio2 these are the okay, best in comparison to other uh, the different metals so the beauty of these two is that these two uh, are okay environmentally benign some are okay the non toxic and these are cheaper one and uh, be okay the one of the important properties that these are okay best okay oxidant and reductant with respect to water oxidation and the okay reduction reaction but okay though these are okay used these are cheaper and these are environmentally benign but okay the bare tio2 or zinc oxide having the certain laggings the first is that okay because of having the wide optical band gap this only absorb the uv part of solar radiation and second key okay, important is that means okay only short okay uh, part of uh, electromagnetic spectrum is to be absorbed and these are active only in the uv region so these okay uh, laggings are to be overcome with the help of the different strategies one can okay use the doping one can use metal supported one can use 
uh, forming the composite with okay, other metal oxide, metal charcoal, and okay, carbon metal or organic sensitizers. And uh, in this, okay, uh, basically in this uh, uh, endeavors, we have okay, prepared the different types of the composites for the energy harvesting, solar energy harvesting. And uh, why okay, the energy? Because energy is one of the, the global challenge. If you're going to see the, okay, this slide, uh, energy crisis is one of the, uh, uh, okay, throughout the okay, globe, not only in India or underdeveloped or developing countries. Okay, if you're going to see uh, at present, okay, most of the, whatever the okay, energy is produced with the, of the fossil fuels, okay? And you know that okay, day by day, okay, global population is okay, is okay, increase. At present, okay, uh, if we're going to see around okay, the overall population of the world is 7.6 billion people, and uh, which okay requires 17 okay, terawatt energy. And in 2050, uh, okay, the population would be around okay, 10, and at that time, okay, will require this much energy, 25 plus terawatt. So, okay, at present, okay, if we're going to go to okay, 2020 or 2021, around okay, 3.5 billion people are not getting the adequate amount of electricity. There is shortage of electricity. Not only shortage, most of the energy is okay, produced with the help of the fossil fuels, which are environmentally non benign sources. Not only that, these sources are to be depleted soon. And because of that, we want to focus on renewable like okay, energy sources and among renewable solar energy is the best and uh, why solar energy is best because it is most abundant if you are going to see okay, here okay how much okay terawatt okay energy is to, okay is to be emitted by the sun per year this much and okay if you are going to see okay compare okay this much energy with other okay resources definitely you are going okay, you are going to reveal that this one is most abundant freely available it is environmentally benign and only around okay, 16 to 17 terawatt year okay, energy want to okay, okay, uh, okay, that much energy is needed for uh, sustaining our okay, the life no doubt so okay if you are going to consider this one then okay, already okay this is the device solar device which convert okay, solar energy into the electrical energy i am not focusing on all these then these are different generation but okay in my okay this uh no uh, innovation we are focusing on the hybrid or sensitized solar devices so this is one of the plot uh, published by national renewable energy laboratory one of the reputed institute in the usa and this plot reveals uh, the various materials with their okay, the ep senses no doubt so especially uh, the uh, if you are going to see uh, first generation which is shown with the help of uh, the blue line Second generation or thin film technology, which is shown with the help of the green line. And last case, okay, okay, uh, means uh, 1970 or 80 onwards up to this, okay, uh, uh, 2019 or 2018, almost okay, this blue and green, uh, okay, having the saturation stage. There is no any drastic increase in the, the epicenses. But if you are going to consider the okay, emerging uh, uh, photovoltaic, this, that is the third generation solar devices. There is a okay, drastic increase in the, the solar okay, energy uh, okay, efficiency. At present, again, okay, in, uh, in few uh, endeavors, the efficiency around okay, 28%, 29%, or okay, 30% okay, percent. So that is the beauty of the third generation solar devices. Okay, so uh, with the help of this plot, one can travel all these okay, regarding different types of materials and their efficiencies with respect to the uh, the okay the time period then okay uh though this uh, means okay uh, means at the end one can say that this hybrid or uh okay, composite solar devices these are competent to the first and second generation solar cell but still these okay uh, hybrid solar devices facing uh the uh the laggings in terms of how to make uh the uniform adherent thin film deposition and how to cover cover the wide okay, range of solar spectrum and one of the important aspect is that how to make the connectivity between the different okay the uh, the metals so that uh, which reflect through the uh, uh, different electrochemical okay the parameters then okay for that okay in this okay along with okay the host okay tio2 and uh, zinc oxide metal we have used the quantum dots 
uh, okay, the beauty of the quantum dot is that this quantum dots okay, as a sensitizer. The beauty of the quantum dot is that usually in okay, bulk metal, bulk CD, okay, S and bulk or CDSC, or if you're going to compare okay, with uh, the CDSC or CDS quantum dots, uh, okay, okay, usually in case of bulk, okay, um, the photon metal, when you incident, okay, when we uh, incident one, okay, photon, which may uh, form the one electron hole pair. But uh, because of uh, the formation of okay, many energy levels in the valence band and the conduction band, in case of the quantum dot, when we instant one photon may generate the two electron or three, more than two uh, or three electron hole pairs. So that is okay the uh, the okay beauty of the quantum dots. Not only that, if you are going to see okay this one, uh, this picture with only small change in the uh, the particle size, there is drastic change in the and the uh, the optical properties so this one like okay, cdsc having particle size this uh, having particle size 1.7 nanometer and having okay the, the blue in color but if you are going towards okay, around 6 nanometer having uh, red in color so uh, the multiple exciton generation that is uh, uh, possible with the help of the quantum dots no doubt second again okay, uh, uh, second okay uh, the on the metals uh, we have used for uh, the composite is that especially we have focused on the multi wall CNTs and the okay, uh, okay, RGOs because uh, these are you know, okay, highly conducting metals. So, for enhancing conductivity, we okay, can install the uh, uh, traditional allotropes, diamond and graph, uh, the graphite or fluorine. We have used multi wall CNTs and the uh, RGOs. Then we also use different types of organic okay, moieties, access, okay, which are the sensitizer. Okay, especially we are focused on the thalocyanin, then uh, perlinamide, then N3, and this N719, this is gradual life. So, so we have used all these okay, metals for making the composite. So, okay, in okay, solar energy harvesting, we have used okay, supramolecular organic inorganic solar day cell. Uh, then second is that quantum dot dye constant the solar cell, then TiO2 CNS nano composite okay, basic okay, DCC. So this is the overall like okay, representation of the overall uh, solar device, which is based on organic inorganic the composite metal. So we have used FTO as the conducting uh, the glass. On this, okay, we have uh, deposited the TiO2. Then after okay, this deposition, we have anchored the perlinamide, this dye molecule. And after that, okay, we have used okay, rhodonium thalocyanin. So during okay, diode formation, uh, we okay, treated this okay, uh, perlinamide in such a way that the pyridine ring of this imide is going to connect with the rhodonium thalocyanin. And then okay, uh, we made this sandwich okay, device using the platinum electrode. And through the one of the, uh, the hole at the platinum, we insert the, the electrode, electrolyte. So this is the okay, overall uh, designing of the uh, the solar uh, device we fabricated using organic inorganic the solar device and if okay, already we have used different characterization technique for that okay this is nmr titration then u visible which reveals how the absorption is to be enhanced and then cv okay i'm going directly for then uh what do the solar device we are okay we have tested under uh, the solar okay, simul solar simulator and uh, Okay, we have okay. Uh, so especially for the uh, the diet, we got around okay, two point okay, twenty nine percent efficiency, and uh, along with that, we have also measured the IPC. No doubt. So here, uh, okay, whatever this work is published in Journal of Solid State Electrochemistry, two thousand nineteen. Then again, we have okay. Uh, after that, okay, uh, we have anchored the dye. Sorry, no, quantum dot dye. Co sensitized on the TiO2. Whatever the TiO2 is prepared with the help of soil gel, then quantum dot, CDS quantum dot, which uh, uh, we are prepared with the help of one pot synthesis, then TiO2 CDS, that composite we have prepared with the help of or deposited is in spin coating method. Then we have anchored the dye, everything again. Okay. So, so I am not going about the, this okay, uh, soil gel. Then we have used okay, uh, the T. Uh, uh, the TiO2, and for that we have used soil gel. Then initially we started with acidic acid, titanium tetrisoprofoxide, and then SDS as the capping. Then uh, we have added the ammonia. We have heated this one, okay, this one at the 60 
to 70 degrees centigrade okay we got this the tio2 nanoparticles then okay after that uh, we have used okay the uh, that powder and we have uh, used uh, dmf and acid nitrile and uh, means initial dmf then acid nitrile then we stored for this one then we made the semi solid and then with the help of the doctor blood technique we deposited this paste on this okay the thin film and whatever the thin film deposition or okay, the thickness has been confirmed with the help of the same studies i'm i'm directly going for the overall okay the presentation of this one this solar device so this is the fto then on which we have uh, <clears throat> yeah. then on which okay we have deposited the uh, The okay, T T K T I O two and whatever the T I O two is another T I O two. I mean, phase is another T I O two. Then you know that on the uh, the T I O two there are okay uh, free uh, the O H moieties and uh, surface moieties and because of O H this char okay surface is okay, negatively charged one and that the okay, negatively charged surface is converted to uh, the positively charged with the help of the P D T A. Okay, so there is anchoring between all the okay O minus and N plus. And we have confirmed that okay, we have justified that series with the help of IR measurement. And then uh, okay, what was the okay cap the mark cap to a uh, cap to CD okay yes quantum dots. Uh, so we have connected to the uh, the positive charge. So here again okay, plus and O minus. So okay, in order to okay T okay in order to connect T I O to with CDSC, we have used P D D A and the mark cap to propanoic acid. These are the linker okay moieties. Then after that we have okay anchored uh, the okay n seven one nine nine size then okay so this is okay overall okay electrode we have okay this uh, working electrode we have uh, prepared and then okay we have used again the platinum as the counter then we then we use the electrolyte uh, iodide polyiodide is electrolyte and when you insert the photon on the same then you know that okay there is ejection of electron from okay, the organic Dimoid to the quantum dot and then quantum dot to the uh, TiO2 and then from TiO2 it is going to into the, the circuit. So here this is regarding overall designing of this device and okay having okay, uh, in this case okay, uh, especially uh, in this uh, quantum dot die cosinator device we okay reach the presence around two point okay three five and the percent then. Uh, then uh, okay, we have used okay uh, the another strategy is that uh, uh, okay we have made the composite between TiO two with carbon nanostructure, and then uh, whatever that composite okay we, which were okay which were sensitized with the help of the N seven one nine dyes as well as ruthenium okay thalosanin dyes, and okay in this okay studies uh, means along with this okay then later on okay this uh, efficiency for this also is somewhat less then we have. Doped the uh, this uh, TiO2 with the help of okay, different okay doping and the uh, the uh, moieties no doubt. So here okay this is the overall uh, thin film uh, deposition means for binder free thin film deposition is one of the uh, aspect we have highlighted in our patent. I am not focusing all these just okay you see I am then okay. So for okay this one okay we reach the solar efficiency you see. Uh, for TiO2, uh, 0.1 weight percent CNT, we okay, got the representation around 6.21%. And the same strategy when you apply it for rhodium thalosanin, it is around okay, 2.07. Okay, then okay, this uh, optimized compo com composition, again, we have uh, okay, used for doping. And this TiO2 is doped with the different dopants, no doubt. And when you, okay, whatever this work is published in SS Omega, uh, this is the overall charge transfer properties i am not explaining all this uh, then okay in case of okay, again we have used the rjo for that and uh, for rjo somewhat we got the somewhat lesser representation in comparison to the uh, the okay, cn design whatever this work published in chemistry Chemist select then we have used okay, dopant as the uh, the the chromium uh, when you use okay dopant as chromium we got this is somewhat the uh, the higher efficiency than TiO to CNT, and we reached around seven point six nine percent efficiency. And whole okay, this work, okay, whatever the work is published into the solar energy. And if you are going to see okay, the, all these metals at a glance, 
we are use okay tio2 okay perlinimide rudin halosine then okay quantum dot then rzo with okay uh, kratzel dye then okay chromium okay dobra okay tio2 multiple centers and n7 dyes okay we got around okay uh, the 7.69 okay, okay percent that was that one is the highest okay efficiency of my the laboratory no doubt then uh, regarding the functional nanocomputers for the super capacitors say, this is okay the second uh innovation and already i have uh, filed this one provisionally but uh complete is to be uh, filed uh within couple of days so in okay this uh, innovation we are focusing on square facets nano bars mob derived uh, co3 uh, means okay this is the composite uh, the cobalt cobalt oxide and doped cnt no doubt and uh, in this okay uh, we have used okay this material for okay, super capacitor okay this studies so basically uh, the main theme of this work is that uh, you know that okay the mobs are emerging metals because of uh, having high surface area high porosity then tunable uh, pore size structural diversity as well as the functional diversity in comparison to the traditional metal so especially in uh, uh, the, okay in this endeavors we have initially synthesized the uh, co btc mop and uh, okay, this uh, co btc mop is synthesized uh, by tuning okay uh, the ph using water uh, uh, tmf uh, uh, solvent system and then okay this uh, whatever uh, this uh, okay square facet nano bars uh, what you okay having like a structure like this one uh, may okay i mean uh, converted to uh, this composite uh, simplify okay simplify okay the annealing under okay the control atmosphere under okay when we heat this one uh, under control atmosphere okay we are getting the core okay shell okay the metal Portion composite. So okay, we tested the uh, the super capacitor, the properties. Then at the end, okay, we uh, revealed that the property okay means uh, specific capacitor is somewhat okay uh, the lesser. So why not to make uh, the composite with the silver and argo? And for that purpose, we uh, use this as the host metal, and uh, we have made the various uh, the composition of uh, the host with the silver and the argo and uh, we have used okay, around the okay, for this binary az and argo we have used around 10 15 means 5 u 10 then uh, 15 and okay 20 weight percent the okay the uh, the binary composition and whatever these two we have mixed with uh, this okay, host metal then uh, <clears throat> whatever the uh, okay we have used okay, different characterization techniques uh, to reveal the different uh, uh okay means thermal then structural and all these i mean different for different properties we have used okay different okay the tools and with the help of means okay for especially xps for knowing oxidation state and uh, the functional moieties around the uh, functional group around the uh the okay uh, different species we use xps for okay structural okay we have used uh, xrd uh for connectivity studies we use uh uh, the okay, IR studies, no doubt. Then uh, for knowing the morphology's properties, so these are the square uh, uh, facets known of parts of the mob uh, COBTC mob. And okay, so this one is a image for the silver nanoparticle. So this is the SCD pattern. Uh, okay, with the help of this, okay, we have confirmed this the formation of silver nanoparticle. And the okay, this is for the composite. And from the lattice fringes, we confirm the presence of different okay, uh, the metals uh, in the, the composite. And after that, uh, <clears throat> uh, we have okay, tested the, uh, the electrochemical performance uh, using okay, the three electrode system, no doubt. So this is the okay, working electrode. And uh, this okay, working electrode okay, is uh, deposited on nickel foam uh, using the okay, drop okay, casting method. Then we have used okay, uh, the uh, the counter electrode that is okay, the platinum and reference as the the calum electrode, and uh, we have measured the specific capacitance using the uh, the potential stand. So okay, at uh, five uh, millihold uh, per second scan rate for bare 
means without the composite we are getting around okay uh, 2500 okay uh, faraday per gram specific capital but for uh, the ternary uh, the compo composite uh, okay we are getting around okay 3393.8 faraday per gram the capacity then uh, not only that uh, why we are getting the same somewhat higher okay the, the because of okay, having the mesoperse structure then uh, for <clears throat> knowing the okay the stability uh, we have uh, okay you okay we have measured uh, i mean we have tested the galano static okay charge discharge okay uh, cycle stability studies and uh, at the end okay it is revealed that whatever the stability of this okay the composite metal not only stability okay along with that the specific capacitance is somewhat okay higher in comparison to the other uh, reported okay the uh, the the cobalt based the composite no doubt so this is the okay the beauty of okay this work and so basically uh, we have okay, synthesized uh, the co btc uh, nano rods and then after that we have converted that uh, into the mesoporous uh, the cobalt oxide based the composite and that host metal we are used uh, for making the composite with silver and the the rco then in the okay, uh, within 5 to 10 minutes i am focusing on this okay functional nano compute for the okay bios okay sensing studies so this is the third innovation uh, already uh, we have published the same in one of the uh, the reported the uh, scientific report journal uh, so okay in this okay we have uh, used okay the different uh, the nano computers for serotonin okay sensing and as we know that uh, serotonin is one of the so this is published in scientific report uh, nature uh, stranger okay, uh, publisher so as we know that um, uh, serotonin is one of the neurotransmitter or uh, this is also called as the happiest molecule so if you are going to see uh, the different biomolecules like uh, dopamine then oxytocin then uh, then okay endorphin and serotonin these are the the okay the biomolecules this especially if you are going to see uh, the uh, the role of uh, the dopamine or uh, role of serotonin present in our body uh, which you know to uh, uh, balance the okay the overall mood of uh, of a human being uh, there is need of the optimum level of this serotonin not only that if for example uh, uh, when we consider uh, if there is optimum uh, level of the uh, serotonin present in the uh, in the body then uh, we are okay uh, okay fully satisfied okay we are usually uh, behave like okay well beings no doubt but okay if there is okay uh, mismatch okay uh, in the uh, optimum level higher or the lower uh, then we feel uh, the okay somewhat okay difference there is a, okay we feel like like anxiety then sometimes okay uh, we may have the symptoms of the cancer like that no doubt or there may be uh, the cancer so uh, the you know to um, sense the serotonin level in our body is one of the important uh, uh, the studies and at present okay there are many okay techniques available uh, to uh, sense the uh, serotonin present in our okay blood but uh, these are okay, uh, time consuming one these are very costlier one so we have <clears throat> uh, tried uh, our level best to develop the nano computer based uh, materials for uh, testing the the zero okay serotonin and in these studies uh, this is okay overall uh, the the graphical abstract of the research endeavors so in this okay we prepared the uh, zinc oxide 1d zinc oxide uh, using simple um, the <clears throat> okay solo thermal method no doubt and we have confirmed the same with the help of uh, the same and for composition we use eds then okay we have also uh, measure the trans okay uh, charge transfer properties uh, with the help of uh, er studies and for that we have used uh, okay these two okay electrolyte one is k3 f6 and okay this phosphate okay the buffer solution no doubt and we have used AZ, AZCL. So among different composites, at the end, uh, it is revealed that 
this R C T. Uh, okay, this is somewhat lower for this compo composite in comparison to the other. This B R and okay, this one, the C N T S as well as the R C O. So the what after uh, making uh, zinc oxide in nano rod forms, we made the composite with different the carbon nano channel C N T S as well as the R C O. And then uh, we okay. Uh, Deep, okay, we pre, okay means whatever the prepared uh, the composite we have deposited on this okay uh, the commercially available screen printed the carbon electrode and for that for making the composite and you know to put on this okay circular uh, okay circular area in a okay, we took okay we uh, took this nano component then we added acid nitrile and then chitosine whatever we are getting this nano components in the uh, semi solid form. And that okay, we have mm, coated here uh, that we have deposited here. Then uh, whatever the uh, serotonin for uh, studies we have uh, tested using the the uh, cyclic voltammetry studies. And uh, at that time we have used uh, point okay one mora uh, phosphate buffer solution, and the pH was seven point okay four and uh, twenty okay uh, milli okay volt per second. That is the okay the scan rate. And okay, among okay, this different the composite material, uh, this uh, screen printed okay carbon electrode with sorry lecture is going on. Hello, lecture is going on. Lecture is going on oh. within okay, 10 to 15 minutes. Huh? So, okay, among these, okay, uh, the uh, current uh, uh, is current or charge, okay, transport properties are higher for uh, this SPC, uh, zinc oxide nanorod with, okay, uh, 0.1 weight percent the CNT in comparison to the others. Uh, so, we have come, okay. Whatever our endeavors we have compared with the others, and in terms of linear region and detection limit, whatever the uh, our material showing the the uh, wide range uh, linear uh, region as well as the uh, the lower okay, detection limit. So that is the beauty of okay, this work, and so this work is also in the pipeline. A lot for the for uh, granting from uh, the Indian Patent Office. Then last case okay, that okay within I to uh, uh, seven minutes. I am covering this aspect: the use of functional nanocomputers for antibacterial pain formulation. Without so, in this endeavors, uh, basically the main theme of uh, this endeavor is that we have synthesized the different okay functional okay, nanocomposites. No doubt, uh, having uh, the anti-microbial uh, properties. And after uh, okay synthesizing and testing the uh, okay, properties, we hand over the same for one of the the paint industries. And uh, using our uh, this attitude, uh, they prepared the antibacterial okay, the paint. So as we know that okay, the paint is everywhere. Means uh, whatever the material we are handling early in the morning up to the night, uh, every everywhere there is paint. And why we are using the paint? Okay, so to enhance the durability of, of a particular object or to uh, okay enhance the external feature of a particular object, we are usually using the paint. But at present, you know that. Um, the uh, the okay whatever the uh, most of the object means when you handle our mobile or laptop or you know that especially in the hospitals uh, there are okay number of okay microbes or bacteria or viruses and uh, at present you know that especially in COVID nineteen uh, this COVID nineteen uh, okay is the, uh, the virus which is the main cause for this okay uh, this okay corona no doubt. So especially uh, uh, in order to either okay, control all these okay, bacterial or microbial okay, infections, okay, there are various strategies, but okay, one can use anti-bacterial uh, pain as one of the, uh, the strategy to control or to retard uh, the growth of the various the microbes. So that is the main thing. And in that, okay, uh, okay, in that connection, uh, we have preferred the, uh, Especially nano base okay, antibacterial agents. And the beauty of the uh, okay, nano base additives is that 
especially these are okay uh, very small uh, uh, the sizes uh, agents and because of having small size they can easily penetrate into the the body of the the bacteria or the viruses and uh, because of that uh, okay, there might be a leakage of different uh, uh, the okay either okay biomolecules from that okay virus or bacteria not only that there might be also the uh, because of uh, having small size these are very energetic one they may uh, okay uh, adhere to the one of the biomolecules and because of okay either like leakage or direct the okay, the contact of the particles with the microbes uh, at the end uh, these okay microbes or the bacteria or virus are going to be inhibited or going to be killed so okay so this is okay one aspect second aspect is that especially in case of the photoactive uh, nano based agents there is usually formation of reactive oxygen species so okay reactive oxygen species the, these are also uh, high energetic one and they may also they kill the the bacteria and because of having okay uh, somewhat uh, i think okay, these are the overriding advantages of this nano base uh, the additives uh, especially okay we have focus on the nano base okay uh, metal metal oxide the antibacterial agents so especially in okay our endeavors we use okay different like silver copper nanoparticles so basically uh, these are the advantages of the metal nanoparticle but when you okay prepare these uh, metal nanoparticles especially in suspension form they, uh, there are various okay limitations these uh, because of uh, having small size these are going to uh, combine easily with other okay, neighboring uh, uh, the metal metals so aggregation is the uh, the main okay, uh, lagging second is that how to recover from this person then because of okay this one so, uh, nano suspension this tablet is one of the issue so these are the limitations uh, with the okay, bare metal nanoparticles similarly the ox okay this tio2 or zinc oxide so these are okay these are having these are the advantages but these are the certain okay, disadvantages and you know to okay uh, overcome okay these uh, limitations of metal nanoparticle bare metal nanoparticles as well as to okay overcome the limitations of the bare metal oxides when you make the composite of this one, these two definitely the means in terms of stability stability is to be enhanced then aggregation okay that okay issue is to be resolved then okay especially in uh, bare zinc oxide or ti would be only active in uv part of solar spectrum or ultraviolet spectrum but when you make the composite it covers the wide uh, range of uh, the okay uh, electromagnetic spectrum so because of that we prepared the composite between metal with metal oxide and uh, especially <clears throat> okay here in in that sense we have uh, okay use different materials okay especially nickel dopper tio2 okay and okay we have okay, this so these are the properties of uh, phase real slide size band gap li light uh, okay which is visible active no doubt so and we have tested okay this okay ni tio2 against uh, the various okay, the bacteria like srs substellus the e coli and okay, these are the okay, uh, uh, the time required to kill uh, the okay the bacteria under the photon so then we have focus on okay uh, this is nickel dopper then this is copper okay tio2 copper dopper tio2 then in okay so we have used different okay tio2 multiple centuries then fe dopper tio2 multiple centuries we have published okay, all these and then in case of this okay among all these az uh, when we okay make the composition of az with uh, tio2 az nanoparticle tio2 so okay here these are the different properties uh, under the okay, eva light within the okay, 30 minutes one can okay uh, the kill the srs but uh, for visible light okay, it requires somewhat uh, the higher time and for e coli it requires around 15 minutes to kill uh, or complete okay inactivation within okay using this eva and for around 120 uh, minutes for a okay, visible uh, the uh, this okay uh, light no
then okay we have file all these uh, in okay in the form of patent and recently uh, the the indian okay uh, patent office has granted the same to me so after making the complete we uh, at lab level we prepared the, the different paints not only that we tested the various properties of the prepared paint and then okay uh, after that we have okay hand over our the additives to one of the uh, industries the fortune code okay the powder in the okay paint industries and uh, that powder fortune code okay uh, industries uh, uh, the prepared uh, the uh, the powder and the paint with our additives and uh, they okay tested okay all these okay properties like a color finish then the curing schedule dry film thickness then okay what is the uh, all these okay impact resistance and different properties they have tested not only that they have tested regarding the the antibacterial uh, the performance of the the, uh, the coated the metal means whatever the paint they have coated on different on uh, the substrate like the okay, glass they have coated on the plastic metal they have coated on the okay stainless steel metal so okay these are okay my uh, research innovations so okay, they, okay these are my different collaborators uh okay harald proto along with okay professor nalin dalal dalal under whom i completed my the postdoctoral fellowship dr lean deni uh, she is working at uh, university of strathclyde uk she is okay helping to me for biosensing studies what you the serotonin uh, sensing studies uh, have been conducted uh, uh, by the lean and her group then dr dk panda and uh, dr annu they are helping for uh, solar energy harvesting and uh, the super capacitor studies then professor s vasudevan well vasudevan under whom i uh, completed my summer research fellowship at iisc bangalore dr s n achar who is helping for uh, ritual refinement and professor p s patil he is presently uh, pro vice chancellor of shiva university yeah, he is also a very good expert in material science uh, professor jp jadhav she is okay uh, working in biochemistry department for different okay, antibacterial and antimicrobial studies uh, we are taking the help of uh, professor jp jadhav ma'am so along with that uh, okay to my research and us different funding agencies especially you know city grant commission then department of science and technology then rajiv gandhi science and technology mumbai and it's my university helped a lot to me and whatever the uh, work i have contributed this because of my these okay the trained okay research scholars uh, who already received the phd uh, under my guidance and at present seven students are working so hemraj yadav okay kori uh, barkul ma'am and dr shivai ma'am and uh, these are the team from my she was in university and these okay uh, these four members from the usmanabad center and with this okay i am very much okay thankful to the, the organizers once again for giving me an opportunity thank you so much if you have any doubt or query welcome dear audience if you have any queries or questions <laughs> uh, you can ask in the chat box or you can raise your hand Uh, we are having one question from our our college sir uh, dr okay. bose yeah Hello, sir yeah sir uh, i have one question yes uh, sir what is the procedure to make a metal contact to the semiconductor chalcogenide solar cell device what is the procedure sir pardon uh, sir pardon. metal contact sir metal contact one can use a okay, silver paste uh, silver contact hmm. okay 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 sir okay thank you sir any other questions uh, i think we don't have any questions right now uh, so we will be moving on to the next session or the last session of this uh, conference and uh, for that uh, i would like to uh, before that i would like to thank dr delega sir for enlightening us with his knowledge on the fields of uh, nanocomposites and nanomaterials Uh, then after that, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Patak sir for introducing Dr. Delegar sir. Then after that, in moving on to the last session, I would like to I would like to invite uh, Dr. Milin Sinkhede sir, head department of zoology and vice president, vice vice principal of Sindhu Mahavidyalaya Nagpur, to introduce our next guest speaker.
डॉक्टर मिलिंद सिंखेडे सर यस गुड आफ्टरनून सर एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यस ओके थैंक यू सर सो फॉर दिस सेशन आई इमेन्सली प्लेजर टू इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर चंद्रशेखर मुराडे he is now engaging the next session final session of this uh, duration uh, in conference presently dr chandrashekhar murade is working as a research scientist at new york university abu dhabi uae and he is working on biosensors he has completed his graduation from ferguson college pune and masters from university of pune he was a research fellow at the university of pune and work on the optical tweezers and biophysics he has completed his doctoral degree from university of twent netherlands on the topic insight into dna intercalation using combined optical tweezers and fluorescent fluorescence microscopy he has also worked as a post doctoral fellow at netherlands with specialization electroweighting and optofuel uh, fluids optofluids he has worked on mechanobiology at institute jacques monard paris as a post doctoral fellow presently he is working on biophysics he has also a patent on molecular sensor and its uses he has published many research papers of international repute in high impact factory journals he has delivered his thoughts and scientific deliberations in many international conferences he is reviewer for various research journals he is also a supervisor for masters and phd students at various international collaborators institutes he delivered more than 40 popular talk series in urban and rural areas of maharashtra online and offline he is founder member of indian student association netherland he was ex vice president of ngo aadhar and vice president of raman memorial conference in 2004 at university of pune he has organized various summer school uh, for the masters and phd students in the field of biophysics so i immensely pleasure to introduce as well as i am inviting uh, dr murade for the next session thank you sir uh, <clears throat> i am audible yes sir yeah okay uh, thank you milin sir for uh, such a nice and wonderful introduction uh, <clears throat> just to add few uh, lines to the introduction that uh, i was born and brought up uh, in uh, akola then i moved uh, then we uh, my native village is uh, hivra murade in amravati district and i had my basic means just to let you know that okay my complete basic education took place in amravati akola akola and then i moved to saini school satara okay and uh, i would also like to thank the uh, organizing committee for giving me this opportunity uh special thanks goes to dr ravi khade sir uh, who has uh, called me on that specific day and asked me that whether i can deliver a talk so now after listening to two uh, wonderful talks uh, by koinkar uh, just to let you know that me and koinkar we worked together uh, for a year or so in the department of physics university of pune and then the, the fantastic talk by uh, <clears throat> professor delegate sir now both of these talks were on material science and now uh, i am going to switch the gears yeah so now we are going to dive into the world of uh, biophysics so as the introduction says i was trained in a physics department uh, but i al already had an inclination towards the biology and uh, <clears throat> this is the talk uh, my i will be sharing my research ideas my research uh, with you all Uh, let me share the screen uh, okay yes hello yes sir it is visible okay it is visible thank you very much so uh, as the topic suggests that uh, we have been working on uh, developing a various biosensors 
based on a DNA to you know to detect the various organization within the cell, function of the various uh, cellular bodies, uh, subcellular bodies, or the interaction of some drug molecules uh, with the DNA. Here today, I'm going to focus on one specific topic out of that, uh, which is known as a macromolecular crowding. Yeah, so uh, let me just give a few minutes to that, uh, why it is very important to understand the cells. All the living uh, organisms, they are made up of cells, but cells themselves are very complex and uh, there are many things which are happening in the cell. For example, most important thing is the cell division, protein synthesis and everything, it's, it, it happens within the cell. But it, it is not a very random process, it is very compartmentalized process. So the certain things of the cells will happen in the cytoplasm of the cell and certain things of the cells will happen only in the nucleus of the cell. So this each and every compartment has a, a definite function and uh, so the, uh, one cannot have the activities what are happening within the nucleus cannot be done in the cytoplasm and vice versa. Up till now, means uh, even before st uh, starting my work on this topic, you know, uh, we, we had the, this particular view of our cell. So this is the textbook picture of the cell. So here you will see some uh, nucleus, cell wall and uh, mitochondria, uh, actin, myosin uh, networks, and those kind of things. What is striking in this uh, schematic is that most of the display uh, space within the cell is shown as an empty space. Yes, do we agree on this? This is the typical representation, uh, schematic presentation of the cell uh, in a textbook. But is it the re uh, reality? So now if, if I magnify, and this is another schematic, uh, what we see, what is in real uh, inside the cell is that cell is completely crowded environment. What I mean by the crowded is that the 40 up to 30 to 40 percent of the cellular volume is occupied by various biomolecules. Now they can be proteins, they can be uh, DNA, RNA, uh, uh, ATPase, uh, kinesin, myosin, all different molecules. And it, the complete space, the 40% space is occupied. So instead of saying that, okay, it is concentrated, we are saying it is crowded because within the cell, you can find more than few thousand types of proteins. The concentration of this protein is smaller, individual protein is smaller, but the number itself makes it very crowded. Now, what is a, so big first about this micromolecular crowding? What happens is that uh, in the labs, whenever we do the experiments, for example, how a particular protein, so I'm going to use very layman terms uh, because uh, I know from my experience that in, Mo uh, in Maharashtra, uh, if we look at the physics and chemistry department, we are more uh, inclined towards the material science. So uh, just to get into this particular presentation, I'll be using a layman terms for uh, from the biology so that you know the interaction is good so what I, uh, uh, what happens is that okay in in uh, coming back to the micromolecular crowding most of the experiments which are done in the lab uh, for example if i want to study that how a specific protein interacts with the dna what i do is that i have a dna and i have a purified protein and i try to understand their interaction, catalytic rate, a binding constant, and those kind of things. But the environment experienced by the DNA and the protein within the test tube is completely different, completely different when it compared to the, uh, the environment that same protein and the same DNA will experience within the cell. Because within the cell, you have crowded uh, environment, the more you have the molecules of a different sizes, shapes, charge, and they are interacting with, with each other. So they are bound to have some effect on this uh, interaction. So let me uh, walk through you this picture, Okay, wh what I mean by the crowding. So the first thing the crowding does is that uh, it reduces the uh, diffusion of a molecule. For example, if you see this person uh, who is standing in the center, okay, 
Now, if imagine that there is a no crowd and he, he wants to go from the center to some of the corner, he can walk very easily and he will be reaching that particular corner very fast. But now imagine that he has to walk all the way through this crowded environment. So his diffusion, let's say in the scientific term, now we will call it a diffusion. Diffusion will be slow. Yeah. So this is one thing which happens in the presence of crowding. The, the diffusion of the molecule goes down. But let's say now he wants to meet his friend in this particular corner. It will take some time for him to go and meet his friend in that particular corner. But imagine that, but if he meets his friend uh, in that particular corner, now it, because of the crowd crowding around them, it will be very hard for them to uh, dissociate. So they will stick to each other for a longer period of a time. So the association constant, so what happens here is that the association constant of the interaction increases. Yes, because of the crowding, diffusion will decrease. But once they are bound, those molecules, two molecules are bound, their dissociation constant really decreases, association constant increases, and those kind of things. So these are the, so there is no chemistry involved in this, okay? It's, it's not because of the chemistry or the groups on, on them. It's just because of the physical presence of the other molecules surrounding these two molecules, yeah? Also, what, okay, so this, uh, we are not the first one to talk on this particular topic. People have, uh, there is a plethora of uh, literature available on this micromolecular crowding. I am giving you just one example from the literature where the scientists have uh, studied the uh, replication rate of a DNA, that is because of the DNA polymerase, the interaction of, this is known as DNA polymerase, the interaction of DNA polymerase with the DNA, which is responsible for the replication of the DNA at the time of cell division. So they did, did, uh, did this experiment in the test tube, okay? And this, is, this was the enzymatic activity. Here you can see the graph. And they use uh, uh, artificial crowder, which is known as polyethylene glycol. We will talk about this in, in more details. So as they increase the crowding, the artificial uh, crowder concentration in the test tube, what they could see is that the enzymatic activity, there is no chemical interaction between the polyethylene glycol with the DNA or with the protein, DNA polymerase. Just mere presence of polyethylene glycol in the solution has increases, increased the uh, enzymatic activity by four or five fold. Yeah, so th these are the uh, some things. So what happens uh, in the uh, micromolecular crowding environment? So let's say we, we have this particular kind of system where we have these four protein molecules or four molecules of interest. And these red molecules, they act as a crowder. With the, uh, what happens is that the entropy of this system is lower. We, will, uh, we know that the system tends to have higher entropy. What happens is that these four big molecules, they will try to come together. By doing so, they will exclude the volume. So they will, they, uh, the red molecules, which acts as a crowder, they will have more volume to free, uh, to move around, which increases the entropy of the system. Giving you the example of the cells, uh, in what happens in the cell or with the protein molecule is that uh, this particular system where the protein molecule is having a bigger structure is not entropically favorable, but if the same protein molecule has, a, uh, uh, you know, it, it has folded and has shrink in his size, its size, the, this is more favorable uh, environment. Uh, entropically more favorable. So what we have learned up till now, or what we know about the micromolecular crowding is that in the presence of micromolecular crowding, the two molecules tend to come together, yeah? So once we, uh, now we would like to measure the micromolecular crowding or the degree of micromolecular crowding within the cell. As we discussed in the previous slides, that within the cell, we have two big compartments. One is the nucleus, one is the cytoplasm. And uh, the, the function of nucleus is different. The function of cytoplasm is different. And 
the our aim was to measure the degree of micromolecular crowding uh, in these two compartments because the micromolecular crowding also affects the DNA protein interaction, as we have seen in the previous slide. So uh, to fulfill this, uh, we, uh, we, develop, uh, we started uh, and, uh, to develop a, a sensor. So first and foremost, if we are going to use our sensor within the cell, then that sensor should be biocompatible, okay? And one of the most biocompatible material we have within our self is the DNA. So we choose a DNA as our, sens uh, our sensor. So this is how our sensor looks like. Our sensor has the two arms, which are double standard DNA, which are really stiff arm. And these two arms are connected with the single standard DNA, which acts like a hinge, very soft, very soft. So what will happen? What we anticipate will happen that, okay, if this is the, our sensor floating into the solution, these two arms are dangling and they are uh, away from each other. But the moment we add the artificial crowders, let's say, or proteins or artificial crowder, because of this crowding, as we have seen, these two molecules will, uh, these two arms will come close to each other because this configuration uh, is entropically favorable. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I'm not going to uh, discuss too much de in detail about the next slide. Actually, this slide was uh, for students, okay? Uh, this, this was to explain the fluorescent resonance energy transfer. So coming back, uh, now, because this sensor itself is in, uh, the size of sensor is in few nanometers, three to four nanometers. And uh, the change in the uh, arm length, tip to tip length is also few nanometers, three to four nanometers change in the length. And to detect such a small uh, changes in the displacement of the arm, what we use is the fluorescent resonance energy transfer. Uh, what is fluorescent resonance energy transfer? The, this term was coined in 1936. So what we have is if we have a fluorophore, a molecule which is fluorescent, uh, we, uh, we excite the uh, molecule, it will emit the light in the longer wavelength, okay? But somehow, if we manage to place another fluorophore, which absorbs the light emitted by the donor, the another fluorophore will be called acceptor. Then this acceptor will be excited and that will, uh, it will emit the light. Now the efficiency, there is an efficiency uh, that how this energy is transferred. So in my previous slide, we just went through it. It's a shekoti, yeah? We know that in the winter season, we have the shekotis. Uh, <clears throat> one of the fact that how much energy you will get from the shekoti is directly proportional to the distance between you and the shekoti, yeah? So that's one, one aspect of it. Second aspect is that, what is the overlap of the donor emission and the acceptor uh, absorption? Okay, that has to be there. If the uh, donor emission is not overlapping with the acceptor, uh, accept, uh, excitation, then nothing is going to happen. So the donor emission has to uh, overlap with the uh, acceptor absorption, sorry, absorption. And also the, the distance between these two molecules has to be very, very small in the range of five to eight nanometers. There are some other fluorophore, uh, Fred pairs, now these are called Fred pairs, where you can go all the way to 20 nanometers and all the way down to two or three nanometers. Uh, the Fred pairs, which we have been using in this study is Cycri and Cypar, very standard Fred pair, where the R0, R0 is that the Fred efficiency, this is given by this formula, the Fred efficiency is 50%, yeah? So for Cy3, sci -fi, the R0, the, the distance at which the freight efficiency is 50% is five nanometers. So these are very, very fine uh, sensors as such. So this is how we think that our sensor should work. So uh, as you can see that, just a minute. Here, uh, as you can see that one uh, tip of the sensor is labeled with the Psi-3, green one. The other tip is labeled with the Psi-5, uh, red one. And once uh, you, pre, uh, you put this uh, sensor into the crowded environment, what will happen is that there will be energy transfer from Psi-3 to Psi-5, from green to red, 
and the intensity of red will increase compared to the intensity of a uh, green. We will come to that particular uh, graph in a moment. <coughs> but up till now, I have been talking about artif uh, some artificial crowders. So uh, in the literature, people use polyethylene glycol as an artificial crowder because it is an inert material, but it, uh, it's a uh, long polymer. When we dissolve this uh, long polymer into the water, it forms a globular structure resembling some structure like a protein. Yeah? And it will fill the space and our molecule of interest or the molecule under the investigation will, free, uh, will feel the macromolecular crowding because of the polyethylene glycol known as PEG. So what we did, we took our sensor, we uh, studied the, measured the uh, emission spectra of Psi3 and Psi5 in the solution. And also we measured the emission spectra of Psi3 and Psi5 in the presence of crowd. So now let me, uh, let me walk through this graph. So what we do is that we have this sensor psi, labeled with Psi3 and Psi5. This is the emission uh, spectra of our sensor when we are exciting minded, we are just exciting Psi3. We are not exciting Psi5 with the laser. We are just exciting Psi3 at around 500 nanometer. And this is the emission spectra. Uh, this is the donor that, that will be Psi3. This is the acceptor that will be Psi5. And as you could see that these two arms are, they are quite apart from each other. So the intensity of donor is very high and the intensity of acceptor is very low. Now you increase the concentration of PEG in the, into the buffer uh, from 0% uh, PEG to 10%. What you see is that the intensity of Psi3 has reduced slightly and the intensity of Psi5, that is the acceptor, has increased. And as we keep on increasing the concentration of PEG in the buffer, we could see that the intensity of donor has started decreasing and simultaneously the intensity of the acceptor has started increasing. And this can only and only happen if these two arms come close to each other. So we know for sure that our sensor is working in the crowded environment uh, or our sensor is uh, reporting the, cr uh, the micromolecular crowd. Now it is not very good to present all the way, uh, all the time this kind of graph. So we can present this graph in the form of freight ratio. So fluorescence resonance energy transfer and what we define freight, how we define freight ratio is that the intensity of the acceptor, this part that is sci -fi, divided by the total intensity of the donor, which is psi3. And in this graph, I have plotted, uh, we have plotted this. So as the, on the X axis, you can see the concentration of PEG from zero all the way to 40%. And the freight ratio increases uh, from 0 0.25 all the way to 0.55. So this is, henceforth, we will be talking only about the freight ratio. So if the freight ratio is higher, that means these two arms are coming close to each other. If the freight ratio is lower, then these two arms are going apart. Yeah, they are flying apart. So, uh, okay, uh, we also did uh, we also did the, uh, it as a function of various uh, peg sizes, from smallest peg to the biggest peg, and so on and so forth. We got a very good response. We will not go into the details of it. But now, we, as we know that now our sensor is working, it, it is reporting the macromolecular crowding. Our primary aim was to put this sensor into the cell. It is not so easy. We have to use some, some biochemistry techniques, which is known as uh, lipofication. Uh, in general, uh, lipofectamine, we are using lipofectamine. But in general, this term is known as transfection. So in that case, uh, a foreign DNA is introduced into the cell. And this process is known as transfection, can be achieved by various techniques. What we have been using is a lipofection. Okay, fine. So uh, as we are running out of time, uh, I will go slightly faster now. So uh, what we have to see is that our sensor is evenly distributed within the cell. So uh, we have cells now uh, which are transfected with our sensor. We again excite only Psi3, uh, Psi3, and on our uh, confocal microscope, we split the light in the wind, uh, em emitted light for a donor and the acceptor. So this is a Psi3 window. This is the Psi5 window on different two cameras. And here we could clearly see that the 
our sensor is evenly distributed within the cell. Yeah, uh, this part I think so everyone knows that this is the nucleus of the cell and this is the cytoplasm of the cell. Yeah. So again, what we can do is that we can divide sci-fi intensity, which is a donor uh, acceptor, and uh, divided it by the psi three intensity, and this is how the maps look like. Okay, after division. One of the thing I will come back to that picture in a short while. One of the thing what we can do is that if we uh, if our cell is in the culture media, what we can do is that we can increase the salt concentration in media. The moment we increase the salt concentration, <coughs> the moment we increase the salt concentration in the media, the amount of water from the cell is uh, given out and cells uh, individual cells start shrinking. Okay, and if we know that if the uh, the size of the cell shrinks, the amount of material is same. What will happen because of this? The micromolecular crowding within the cell incre will increase. So whether we can, uh, whether our sensor can report this, this is the first thing. <clears throat> now, as you can see, uh, at the normal salt concentration, compare uh, and compare it with the high salt concentration, you will see that the cell is brighter. That means our freight ratio is higher. That means our this the cell in the presence of high salt concentration is more crowded compared to the cell at a lower salt concentration, okay? So that means our sensors are intact. We did a number of controlled experiments. Uh, we, we will not go through that, but we in the biology, you have to do a number of controlled experiments, yeah? Uh, it's a very murky business, but yes, that, that's, that's how the biology works. So uh, what we have observed, and that, that was really remarkable and uh, shocking for us, uh, it, it was counterintuitive observation that if you look at this histogram, what we found out is that the nucleus is less crowded compared to the cytoplasm. And we, what we were uh, thinking of is that nucleus should be more crowded. You know, it has a DNA. Now, just let me give you the favor of DNA. If you take a human DNA out of this nucleus, if you take a, this uh, human uh, nucleus, human cell, and the new from if you take a DNA, human DNA, and stretch it like a wire, it is two meter long. How much? It is two meter long. And this two meter long DNA is compacted with a different kind of proteins and those things in the nucleus, which is just few microns in a diameter, few microns. So there's a six order of magnitude packing happening here of our DNA within our nucleus, yeah? So we, we thought that, okay, it should be more uh, compact, I mean, it's more crowded because there is no, not only the DNA there, there are various proteins, histone, many, many things are there. But yes, your results are your results. Your observations are your observations. Now you have to explain it, why it is so. Yeah, why it is so. So we came up with a hypothesis. Okay, so now here you will see a, a schematic a A and B. Here, our molecule A, uh, in A and B, the number of molecules, if you have a time, you can count them. Uh, in A and B, in that particular box, we have equal number of molecules. The difference with, and they have equal volume available uh, for them to move around. And assuming that our this red molecule is our sensor, which, which is now in the nucleus. So what is happening here that in the schematic A, everything is so well organized. That, okay, these molecules are well organized. So our sensor is feeling so free that as if it is in the dilute solution. Now compare that uh, the same scenario we have where you have the same number of molecules, but these molecules are not organized. Yeah, these molecules are not organized. So our sensor will feel that, oh, I am in the crowded environment. For example, uh, in our classes also, if everyone, you know, if everyone is standing in the row, we have the ground, yeah? We have the assemblies. We used to have assemblies. So in the ground, when kids, uh, when the students, they are standing in a row, uh, they are well organized, teachers can free, uh, freely move around yeah? and uh, observe each and every student. But imagine same number of students in the same ground, if they are scattered, they are not well organized, then 
it, it is really difficult for teacher to move from one place to another place. So we hypothesize that, that this particular thing must be happening within the nucleus. That's why we saw that nucleus is less crowded. So, uh, okay. I forgot to move this animation that, okay, this molecule will be moving in this uh, environment, but not in the uh, environment present in the bee. As some time back, I have explained you that we have this two meter long DNA, which is firstly wrapped around the uh, nucleosome, which is made up of a DNA, uh, sorry, histone molecules. And there is a higher and higher structure of organization within the nucleus. So when we say that this DNA is expressed or that gene is expressed, then that particular gene is opened, that DNA becomes, a, uh, it, it is open and proteins will interact with it. Uh, the DNA will be expressed or mRNA will be expressed and then it will be shielded uh, or will be organized. That's how the biology works. Now, what we thought of that, okay, there are, you know, there are a uh, number of uh, drug molecules uh, which, which can uh, disturb the interaction of this uh, DNA with the histone molecules. There are drug molecules available. So, <clears throat> for example, ESA or etoposides, these are the drugs which are available on the market, uh, which can disrupt the histone DNA interaction. What we were aiming to do is that, okay, we could see that this DNA is nicely wrapped around the histone. It is well organized structure. But if we disrupt this interaction, what will happen is that now this DNA is free to move and it will occupy more space. So it will, it will make the interior of the nucleus more crowded. Yeah, that was our hypothesis. So what we did is that we treated our cells with the TSA and antipocyte. And we put our sensors into these cells and we started measuring the uh, freight ratio of just nucleus. Now we are not interested in complete cell, uh, just nucleus. And this is the average uh, freight ratio of the nucleus without any drug. And if you look at the averages in the presence of drug, the averages have gone down. So that means the reason why we saw that the nucleus is less crowded compared to the cytoplasm, because in the nucleus, DNA is so nicely organized and there is enough space within the nucleus for our sensors to move. Once we disrupt, uh, disrupt the organization of the uh, DNA within the nucleus, yes, you start seeing the micromolecular crowding. So in conclusion, I would say that, okay, we were successful in uh, creating a, uh, a sensor which can uh, determine the degree, not the exact crowding, but the degree of uh, micromolecular crowding within the uh, various compartment of the cells. Uh, this sensor is biocompatible. And there are other uses of these cells also, but uh, I will stop myself here. And if there are any questions from the audience, I will take it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for your showering us with your knowledge. Uh, now I'm asking audience to ask their questions. Uh, we are having one question from our institute, sir. Dr. Yeah. Adav, sir, will be asking you a question. Uh, sir, recently, which new cell functioning identify using biosensor? Recently, which new cell functioning identify using biosensor? Okay, so it's it's not about the uh, new cell functioning as such. You know, we, we, we still don't understand too much about the uh, uh, cell, cellular functions, okay? So uh, this is just one uh, tip of iceberg where we have created the sensor, which can uh, now uh, measure the degree of crowding within the, nucle within the cell. Now, uh, within the uh, nucleus also, what we have figured, figured it out is that there are uh, centrosomes more uh, which are even less crowded than the nucleus of the cell, okay? And centrosomes are those pockets within the nucleus. It is very well known. Uh, those pockets within the nucleus where the, the uh, protein synthesis or messenger RNA synthesis uh, happens, yeah? Or the, 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 there is a new frontier in the uh, 
biophysics, biochemistry, which is known as liquid-liquid phase separation, where what happens is that within the liquid, you have two different phases. In one phase, you will have the very high concentration of biomolecules so that the interaction can take place very fast. And outside that particular phase, there is no, uh, the, the concentration of these biomolecules goes down. So once this function is done, once this reaction is done, this liquid-liquid phase uh, also disappears. So it's known as co-acrovats, co-solvets, something like that. So basically, we are trying to understand how the uh, how the micromolecular crowding uh, works, how is the volume of the cell is responsible. Because uh, if you go into the some other field, which is known as biomechanics, you know, uh, there also uh, people are not even talking about the chemical stimulus. They are talking about the bio uh, mechanical stimulus. After getting the mechanical stimulus uh, by when a cell get a mechanical stimulus, it kickstarts the biochemical interactions or the reactions. And one of the mechanical stimulus uh, a cell can get is by drastically changing the volume of the cell. Yeah, and how it so this is still uh, ongoing research, uh, and this is out of scope uh, for me. As a biophysicist, what we try to do is that uh, we try to use uh, physics techniques like uh, like AFM, optical diffuser, fluorescent microscopy, uh, fluorescent, uh, sorry, uh, and those kind of single molecular techniques to address or to understand the biological systems. That's what we try to do. And still we are very, very long way to go. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Murali, sir, for this in intellectual session. I would like to extend my thanks to Dr. Sinkhede, sir, for chairing the session and introducing the Murali, sir. Now, after hearing all the uh, resource person, I must say we have now updated our knowledge in the fields of nanomaterial and biosensors. Now, I would like to invite organizer of this international e-conference and principal of Let Pushpa Devi Patil Arts and Science College Resort, Dr. J.B. Devde, sir, for his presidential speech. Dr. Devde, sir. Good afternoon to one and all. Friends, today we have gathered here or an international e-conference on current innovation in sciences. I must thank to our organizing committee and my colleagues who has organized such a nice e-conference in the honor of my superannuation Friends, indeed, it is a matter of pleasure for me that in my tenure of these six years in this institute, that is Jivan Vikas Shikshan Samstha Resorts, right, Pushpa Devi Patil Arts and Science College Resort. So far, uh, we have organized eight national conferences, e-conferences, and this is a, a first international e-conference we have organized. I joined this uh, institute in uh, April 2016, and I am happy at this stage, that at the stage of superannuation, I'm happy that I have did much of the work for this institution with the help of uh, management of this college, with the help of our colleagues and all the stakeholders. And I am happy that very qualitative education is being taught in this institution. And as a part of this such type of 
e conferences are organized by our institution as you know from last two and a half years there is a pandemic situation due to covid 19 and in this difficult situation it is a very difficult task before the educational field to run this system but our faculty members maybe of art faculty science faculty they have utilized ict based mediums always in a very good manner and in a very technically manner and due to this this pandemic situation uh, our students they got benefit and as a part of this this is the e conference today uh, we are running this e conference i must thank our president honorable babar patil kharse our secretary honorable amit patil kharse and our governing body who has always uh, given a full support for the institution of this uh, institution for the development of this institution today my colleagues my guru my friend and a great academician professor dr a s aswar head department of chemistry sant gadge baba amravati university amravati has in his keynote address has given a very uh, kind address and he has used a very kind word which are encouraging for me dr r aswar always in his, my career he is associated with me near about 40 years and he has always helped me uh, in the field of the, in this academic field so i must thank him uh, for his kind word here honorable uh, dr pm koinkar sir from tokusama university japan dr s d delkar from kolapur university kolapur uh, shivaji university kolapur then dr c u murade sir work as a resource person and they have nicely briefed uh, brief about the themes particularly dr p m winkar he has nicely expressed regarding the nanotechnology uh benefits of the nanotechnology advantage of the nanotechnology and also delankar sir also uh, emphasized the need of nanotechnology after that dr murade sir who is a man of the biophysics he has also uh, explained nicely regarding the use of this uh, sensors particularly in the biophysics material and in this way uh, it is a grand success full uh, e conference i think uh, near about organizers or organizing secretary told me near about 70 research papers has been so far received and all of these research papers they are going to publish in a ugc approved and referred journal that is international journal of creative research thought so it is a very matter of uh, proud uh, for me that a such a uh, number of papers they are received for this conference i think because of this conference most the all the participants delegated delegates and our colleagues our students researchers uh, are Uh, must be benefited so once again i thank to all the uh, resource persons who deliver their talks in this e conference uh, i must uh, thanks to our uh, entire team up of the college particularly dr borse who is a coordinator of iqc dr aryam ranjalkar convener of this conference dr k f shelke then all the science faculty uh, members particularly 
डॉक्टर फाटक डॉक्टर उम्बरकर डॉक्टर अडाव डॉक्टर रवि खाड़े एंड ऑल डॉक्टर बदर ऑल द साइंस फैकल्टी मेंबर्स ऑल दे आर वेरी इंथुजिस्टिक एंड दे आर यूजिंग दिस आई सी टी टेक्नोलॉजी वेरी प्रॉपरली फॉर आवर स्टूडेंट्स एंड दे आर ऑलवेज ऑर्गेनाइज सच टाइप ऑफ इवेंट सक्सेसफुली सो वंस अगेन I do uh, thanks to them, and with this, I conclude my presidential speech. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, sir, for your presidential speech. After this session, we will be moving to the next session, and we are having oral presentations of candidates who will be presenting their papers or uh, presenting their research. So we have already. Uh, put it the list on the telegram so that the participants should get ready for this purpose and the first uh, presenter we are having is hiryu s deshmukh a department of botany mahatma phule arts commerce and sitaram ji choudhary science college varud district amravati she will be presenting a paper uh, photochemical and gcms analysis of aromatic plant leonitis nepetic folia Shariu S. Deshmukh. Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Deshmukh, ma'am. I think Shuri Ma'am is not there. Let's move on to the next participant, uh, Prita Shamra Abhorkar Ma'am, Department of Microbiology, NES Science College, Nanded, Maharashtra, India. She will be presenting a paper, uh, Essential Oil Extraction and Antioxidant Properties of Silver Nanoparticles and Methanol Extract of Cinnamonum Barium. Prita Shamra Abhorkar Ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I am sharing the presentation. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Begin, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. I am Dr. Preeta Borkar from uh, NES Science College, Nanded. Uh, I am presenting one of my students' work uh, on antioxidant properties of silver nanoparticles and uh, methanol extract of cinnamomum verum bark, inner bark. So, as you know, uh, uh, that is cinnamon, uh, that is cinnamon, dalchini. Particularly, we call it as by a Hindi name, cinnamon. Uh, is a true Ceylon, uh, which is usually uh, native to Sri Lanka and southern parts of uh, India. So this cinnamomum verum is uh, having the scientific, uh, that is belongs to the order laurels, uh, belongs to the family laurelsii and uh, the kingdom uh, plantae. So if we go through the nutraceutical importance of cinnamomum verum, this cinnamomum verum is used as an antimicrobial agent uh, for combating the different types of infections caused by bacteria, fungi, uh, as well as uh, some uh, viruses too. It is also used as an astringent uh, and therefore it is uh, um, uh, used particularly in the toothpaste uh, as well as uh, in the astringent. So in oral, oral hygiene also, it is very uh, important. Uh, since it is having an anti-inflammatory uh, activity, uh, therefore you can use it as an antispasmic agent or uh, in uh, some stomachic uh, uh, problems also. So also it can be used in uh, uh, for treating the sore throats or the diaphoresis, or uh, sometimes you find the organ indurations and that can be treated with the uh, cinnamomum verum. So, 
uh, but the important property see uh, this uh, organ induration or uh, the anti tumor activity is uh, uh, of the cinnamomum verum is attributed due to the antioxidant property so these are the uh, few uh, areas or the fields where uh, uh, cinnamomum verum is finding its nutraceutical importance so how do you differentiate in between the cinnamomum casea and cinnamomum verum so if you find these two bowls uh, this is your cinnamomum verum and this is the casea or uh, cinnamomum so this is having a hard texture and it is having some some rough uh, texture form so the structure is uh, rough but uh, in this case in the verum you have a now, usually we are using a inner bark and this are having a uh, that is a fine uh, inner bark lining with the fine texture so they are very fine in nature so why i have chosen the cinnamomum verum uh, because uh, uh, there, uh, there is a report by uh, world health organization on traditional and uh, uh, what we call it as a preventive medicine and it is said that more than 30% of the indian population they rely on the traditional medicine for uh, primarily for their health benefits so and cinnamomum is having different uh, uh, health benefits and therefore it is very prized uh, position of uh, india so since it is having anti diabetic properties uh, so because uh, uh, this particular uh, anti diabetic property is attributed because of uh, uh, usually uh, it increases the insulin sensitivity and improves the metabolic uh, markers associated with the ins uh, insulin resistance and uh, therefore sometimes it uh, what happens this particular cells they stop responding to insulin like in diabetes 2 patients so uh, particularly uh, if we observe the report of us near about 32.2% of us population is having this particular insulin resistant uh, Uh, insulin resistance but indians since we are using the spices in our uh, uh, food ingredient as a food ingredient we don't at least uh, to some extent we are uh, uh, having some uh, insulin uh, sensitive sensitivity then secondly it is uh, cinnamomum verum is having the antimicrobial properties uh, and it is also having a less comarin percent because uh, it is having only 0.004% of uh, comarin when uh, when compared to uh, cinnamomum casea this it is 250 times uh, less uh, compared to the cinnamomum casea and uh, it is also controlling the alzheimer's disease because cinnamomum is uh, having a bioactive compound uh, which appears to block a protein which is called as the tau and uh, this tau is usually accumulating in the blood and which is responsible for the alzheimer's disease so it is having a potential in controlling the alzheimer's disease also and the most important property is the antioxidant property as well as it is having the anti tumor activity it is also having the low cholesterol lowering and that is cholesterol lowering ability as well as immuno modulating effect so uh, this study is uh, usually emphasized on the synthesis of silver nanoparticles and uh, sin why silver nanoparticles because uh, in the recent years uh, significant importance is given because of the societal demand to produce cost effective eco friendly uh, technologies in the material sciences and uh, since this uh, uh, silver nanoparticles are produced by using uh plant extracts it is a uh, alternative to the chemical and uh, physical uh, physical methods of synthesizing the silver nanoparticles as well as silver nanoparticles have been uh, synthesized uh, by using biological systems like uh, bacteria fungi viruses even the small biomolecules like vitamins and amino acids are also uh, used for synthesizing the silver nanoparticles uh so this uh this is an attempt to prepare or to synthesize silver nanoparticles using the cinnamomum verum uh, plant extract uh graphene gold uh, nanoparticles are synthesized but they are very cost effective and expensive so usually silver nanoparticles are easy to synthesize since they are green uh, because we employ green chemistry it is a rapid process cost effective biocompatible Uh, with stability and you have the safety and efficacy too 
So we'll move on to the methodology. Uh, this, uh, yeah, the cinnamoma was sorted out. It was uh, actually uh, procured from a local market uh, from Nander, uh, that is the Ayurvedic shop. And then it was sorted and cleaned by uh, washing with distilled water and then dried for two days and then milled in the varying blender and then proceed for, proceeded for the cold maceration for getting the methanol extract and uh, hydro distillation method was uh, followed for uh, uh, extracting the essential oil by the, process, by the method of uh, Kehinde et al. in uh, that is 2021. And uh, synthesis of silver nanoparticles were synthesized by adopting the method of uh, uh, Gloria Eaton, uh, in which uh, the silver nitrate was used uh, to prepare the silver nanoparticles uh, uh, by using the cinnamomum verum. And how the characterization of silver nanoparticles were done? Usually, when the silver nanoparticles are reduced, there will be a uh, color change. Uh, usually, you will have a uh, in that visual assessment of uh, color change is uh, monitored for uh, formation of the silver uh, nanoparticles. And also they were periodically uh, measured uh, by using a UV based uh, spectrophotometer, which is uh, of uh, Shimaz do, uh, that is Shimazu make. And uh, FTIR analysis was also carried out because we have this facility at our college. And uh, FTIR analysis was used to determine the uh, functional groups on the biomolecules which are responsible for the reduction of silver ions to silver nanoparticles. So this uh, spectra was collected from 50 scans at a resolution of uh, 4 centimeter, uh, that is per centimeter, and in the range of uh, 500 to 4000. Uh, and antioxidant, this uh, study is emphasized on, on the one particular aspect that is the antioxidant uh, property. And the antioxidant property was uh, measured or evaluated using DPPH and the reducing power assay. So first, this uh, free radical scavenging assay uh, in which DPPH is uh, used uh, as a hydro hydrogen donating antioxidant. And uh, this uh, DPPH is uh, uh, after reduction, uh, uh, it forms a non-radical form of DPPH. And you will see that there is a color change from purple to yellow, which is monitored by the spectrophotometer. So usually the di disappearance of purple color is monitored at uh, 570 nanometer. And how will you calculate the percentage DPPH radical scavenging activity? Uh, this is ca uh, calculated by this formula, that is percentage DPPH sca radical scavenging activity is uh, calculated by, uh, that is AO minus A1 whole divided by a AO uh, in, uh, uh, into 100. So AO is the absorbance of the control, uh, which is which we use as a uh, methanol uh, uh, with a DPPH. And uh, here we A1 is the uh, DPPH uh, dissolved in methanol plus your, uh, that is the cinnamomum extract. So the second assay of uh, antioxidant property was carried by reducing power assay. And this reducing power is associated with uh, antioxidant activity and uh, may serve as the si a significant reflection of antioxidant activity. So this is, this is the method uh, which was followed uh, by taking 1 ml of extract and 2.5 ml of phosphate buffer and uh, 2.5 ml of potassium ferrocyanide and the reaction was uh, terminated by trichloroacetic acid and then it was uh, uh, centrifuged and uh, then the upper layer was taken and it was uh, the absorbance was take, measured by UV spectrophotometer at uh, that is uh, spectrophotometer at 700 nanometer and uh, ascorbic acid was used as a positive control. Now we'll move on to the uh, result and discussion section. So this essential oil was extracted by hydro distillation process in the Clevenger app apparatus. And we have got a uh, good yield. Uh, 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 the oil was having a, a nice aroma and uh, this is kept for the further uh, investigation for uh, 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 going with the uh, gas chromatography technique and uh, deriving what different uh, bioactive molecules are present. At this uh, juncture, uh, juncture, I don't have this uh, data. Um, 
this uh, uh, i am focusing here on the silver nanoparticles so silver nanoparticles uh, of uh, uh, that cinnamomum verum uh, initially there was only a light brown color but after the silver nanoparticle formation that is when the silver nitrate was reduced to, to silver nanoparticles you will uh, you have uh, you will see that uh, dark brown color is usually observed uh, the dpph activity Carbic, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, this the result. The re yeah, uh, the results of this study shows that the extract can be easily accessible source of natural antioxidants, and uh, we will see uh, uh, this findings uh, have shown that cinema uh, cin uh, cinema uh, methanol extract is showing a higher or IC50 value, because in methanol extract, usually the phenols and the flavonoids are uh, extracted out and uh, therefore it is having a, a natural antioxidant which, uh, uh, which is inhibiting the DPPH. Uh, but the cinnamomum uh, silver uh, nanoparticles, they are showing the less uh, inhibiting DPPH activity. Uh, the, uh, the FTIR analysis, uh, it was uh, carried out at a resolution of four centimeter uh, per centimeter, that is uh, to identify the functional groups. And uh, usually we have got different peaks of uh, this particular spice, cinnamomum verum. And uh, this bands, uh, which is uh, uh, in, uh, observed in the next slide, it denotes the stretching vibrations responsible for compounds like uh, flavonoids, phenoids, terpenoids, proteins, etc. And uh, they are responsible. And these particular compounds, they are responsible for reducing, capping, and stabilizing the silver nanoparticles. So this is the FTIR analysis report. You will see that the OH, is, OH stretching is because of the alcohol functional group. CH is because of the alkene group. C double bond O is because of conjugated acids. Then C double bond O is an alpha, beta, unsaturated ketones, and O is because of the nitro group. And uh, this is because OH is because of the, uh, this particular stretching uh, is different from the, this uh, OH stretching. So this is because of the carboxylic acid group, and this is the aliphatic ether and the halo group. So this uh, uh, now the uh, in this study, the in vitro antioxidant uh, activity of synthesized silver yeah, nanoparticles. Yeah, yeah. Just only one slide. So yeah. DPPS scavenging activity. So this reducing power of synonymum verum was uh, uh, carried out and reducing power activity implies that the capable of donating hydrogen atom in the uh, dose dependent. So this is the conclusion that uh, synonymum verum is having a good deal of oil, uh, which can be a uh, potential antioxidant agent because of presence of phenolic and uh, flavonoid compounds. And uh, this in vitro assay indicates that uh, it can be helpful in uh, combating the antimicrobial, um, anti it can be used as antimicrobial agents as well as it can be used as uh, in different uh, certain uh, cancers also. And uh, finally, this uh, it is responsible, uh, since this uh, antibiotic activity is not currently uh, unclear because we have not gone for the further analysis uh, uh, of uh, what type of bioactive molecules uh, are uh, present in it. So we will be carrying forward this. And uh, usually uh, the cinnamon synthesized is, can be used in nanomedicine, nutraceuticals and in food packaging industries. So acknowledgements, I, am, I, ex I would like to express my thanks to principal professor T. U. Gavai sir and ES Science College Nandit. And uh, also to the organizing committee of uh, International e conference. Uh, I am very much thankful to Dr. Uh, Ranjilkar, sir, who has given me this opportunity to present uh, my paper. And uh, good wishes to all the organizers for this uh, wonderful uh, sessions, which I have enjoyed in uh, uh, enjoyed today, and I have enlightened myself with the knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Now move on to the next presentation. But before that, I would like to. Uh, take note of the thing that a participant should present their presentation within 10 minutes.
or less than that. Now move on to the next session. We are having Mr. V. S. Deshmukh, sir, Department of Mathematics. Mrs. V. S. Deshmukh, ma'am, Department of Mathematics, P. R. M. I. T. and R. Badnera, Amravati, India. And the topic and the paper she is presenting is five-dimensional plane system symmetric string cosmological model with bulk viscosity in general relativity. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ms. Brinda Sharachandra Deshmukh. Today, I'm going to present my paper on topic five-dimensional plane symmetric string cosmological model with bulk viscosity in general relativity. I'm working under the guidance of Dr. V.G. Mate, sir. Abstract of my paper. In this paper, we considered five dimensional symmetric BNJ1 cosmological model generated by cloud of a string with particle attached to them with bulk viscosity in general relativity. To obtain solution of field equation, we consider that shear scalar of the model is proportional to expansion scalar, which lead to anisotropic relation between the metric potential. Also, the physical and geometrical properties of the model are discussed in detail. These are some keywords. Now, introduction. In cosmology, the rate at which the phase transition proceeds is given by the expansion rate of the universe, which is very fast in early universe. Hence, topological defect will inevitably be produced in a cosmological phase transition. This is uh, some more introduction about my topic. Now, we'll move towards metric and field equation. Here, we have considered plane symmetric Bianchi type 1 in 5 dimension. ds square equals to dt square minus a square t dx square plus dy square minus b square t dz square minus c square t d psi square, where a, b, c are the function of cosmic type t only. The energy momentum tensor for cosmic string with bulk viscosity is given by tij equals to rho u tij equal to rho ui uj minus lambda xi xj minus psi theta ui uj minus gij. Here, rho is the energy density, lambda is the string density and are related by rho equal to rho p plus lambda. Psi is the bulk coefficient of viscosity. Theta is the expansion scalar. u raised to power i, the phi of velocity cloud particle. X raised to i as the unit space like vector represent the direction of string. Then the physical quantity of dynamical interest in cosmology are given. The expansion scalar theta is twice a dot upon a plus b dot upon b plus c dot upon c. The shear scalar sigma square is given by equation 12. The Hubble parameter h equal to 1 by 4 summation of hi. The deceleration parameter Q, which is defined as Q equal to d by dt, 1 by h minus 1. Now, cosmological solutions. The set of field equations 6 to 9 are the system of four independent equations, six unknown. So, in order to obtain deterministic solution of above system, we consider the analytic relation between scale factors, that is c equal to a to the power n, where n is constant. Then from equation 6 and 8, we obtained equation 16, which is following two cases. Case 1, a double dot upon a dot plus 1 plus n, a dot upon a plus b dot upon b equal to 0. Case 2, a dot equal to 0. And the following subsection, we intend to determine cosmic string model for the above mentioned classes. Case 1, here, in this case, we obtained the value of a of t in equation 17, from which it is clear that given any function b of t, we can find a of t. Therefore, the solution are not unique. However, for further studies here, we consider equation 18. Now, solving equation 18, we get equation 19 and b equal to k3 e to the power minus kt, where k1 K2 and K3 are constant of integrations. From equation 15 and 19, here we get the value of C. 
from equation 7 to 9 using equation 19 to 21 we obtain the string tension density that is lambda equal to equation 22 now we got psi theta equal to k square minus twice n plus 1 k1 square e to the power 2 kt n plus 1 k1 upon k e to the power kt plus k2 whole square the energy density rho is given in equation 24 The particle density is obtained by equation twenty five. Special volume V is obtained in equation twenty six. The expansion scalar is theta equal to k one e to the power k t upon k one upon k e to the power k t plus k two bracket minus k. Hubble parameter H is obtained by equation twenty eight, twenty nine, twenty eight and Psi is obtained by equation twenty nine. The deceleration parameter Q we obtained from equation thirty. Now, the metric given in equation one can also be written like given in equation thirty two. For case two, a dot upon a dot equal to zero. Here we consider a equal to p, which is constant, and from equation fifteen and thirty three. We get c equal to p to the power n. Now, field equation six to nine, together with equation thirty three and thirty four, reduces to b double dot upon b equal to psi theta rho equal to zero lambda plus psi theta equal to zero. Here, there are three equation thirty five to thirty seven involving four unknowns lambda, psi, theta, b, and rho. in order to obtain a deterministic solution we have to assume a physical or mathematical condition in literature here we find different equation of state for string model but we have consider rho equal to lambda that is geometric string or number string and rho equal to 1 plus omega lambda that is p string where omega is constant such that omega greater than 0 therefore using equation 38 and 39 we derive the solution of equation 35 to 37 in following sub sections where omega is constant such that omega greater than 0 therefore using equation 38 and 39 we derive the solution of equation 35 to 37 in following sub sections now the geometric string rho equal to lambda in this case we got rho equal to lambda equal to 0 and psi equal to 0 and capital b equals to lt plus m where l not equals to 0 and m are integrating constant thus this case lead to five dimensional vacuum vacuum model in einstein theory and metric 1 becomes equation 43 then about p string from equation 36 we get 1 plus rho 1 plus omega into lambda equal to 0 which is either 1 plus omega equal to 0 or lambda equal to 0 but omega equal to minus 1 is not acceptable as omega is always greater than 0 and since if lambda equal to 0 the model reduces to the model already obtained above in equation 43 now about conclusion In this paper, we have presented five-dimensional plane symmetric Bianchi type one string cosmological model with bulk viscosity. The model shown in equation thirty-two is inflationary at an initial epoch t equals to zero. The metric in equation thirty-two becomes flat. Expansion scalar theta is finite at an initial epoch t equals to zero and is tend to zero when t tends to infinity. thus expansion of the model is finite also since limit t tends to infinity sigma square by theta square not equals to 0 the universe remains anisotropic throughout the evaluation the special volume for the model increases with time the deceleration parameter obtained here is negative for k k2 greater than 0 and k1 greater than 0 thus indicate inflation in the model now these are some references which i have we have used in our paper these are some more references thank you thank you ma'am for your presentation after ma'am i would like to invite mr tandare 
department of zoology sri venkatesh arts commerce and science college deogawa raja district building where this district bulana his topic is wetland conservation a case study on lonar crater india ms mr tandale sir tandale sir is not available so i would like to call upon stage next participant mahendra r bise sir department of botany late kumari durga ke banmeru science college lonar district bulana and his topic is uh, airwa lantana a potential medicinal herb for removal of renal calculi mahendra r bise yes sir yes sir <clears throat> sir please follow the timeline and finish within 5 to 10 minutes uh, okay sir yeah uh, first of all thank you sir and uh, good afternoon one and all all the respected participant in this present conference uh, yes uh, first of all i am uh, grateful to uh, give me a chance to present my paper in this conference sir is it visible yes sir yes yes sir thank you sir so uh, myself dr mahendra bise i am a assistant professor in department of botany late kumari durga ke banmeru science college lonar district buldana and today i am going to present my research paper entitled erva lenata a potential medicinal herb for removal of renal calculi that is kidney stone so uh, friends uh, today uh, many of the peoples we are suffering from nephrolithiasis it means many of the peoples having the kidney stone or we can commonly called as the renal calculi it is generally become or it is generally formed due to dehydration or less consumption of water and even much uh, excretion of uh, some toxic material like um, uh, oxalate and that much so uh, due to that in our kidney and bladder even the urethra uh, this kidney stone will be formed it is of combination of calcium and oxalate so these calcium and oxalate they making a bond and they uh, forming that type of stone so uh, in this paper i try to emphasize or focus on which are the herbal medicines are more more potential to cure this uh, nephrolithiasis or you can say the kidney stone so uh, in this paper i uh, mention which will be the more potential herb which is commonly available in our area and traditionally our peoples are commonly used to treat this uh, kidney stone so it is erva lenata so we i found that the erva lenata has much potential to cure the kidney stone in less time duration the other plants like um, silosia even the uh, 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 tribulus terrestris and so many plants they are also used to cure this kidney stone but among these a very <coughs> commonly occurred weed plant that is erva lenata it has a much more potential so in this study i uh, review many of the references and uh, generally in our area uh, like from the uh, vidarbha uh, here is the, uh, the somewhere the scarcity of water and many of the peoples like from the farmers and uh, even from the businesses they uh, they are always engaged in, in their work and during this time uh, the dehydration or less amount of water uh, will be happen and due to that many of the persons they are having the Uh, kidney stone problem so uh, there are many of the types there are many types of kidney stones uh, and uh, many of the medicines are also used to cure these uh, kidney stones many of the medical practices are also uh, used to remove of that kidney stone but in this paper i would like to focus on the erva lenata it is a very simple plant commonly observed in our area and if we use a crude extract of that plant 
along with a, a glass of buttermilk uh, in the empty stomach, it will give a, a, a very positive and uh, low time duration effect to removal of these kidney stones. Right? So it is a very, very simple process which is used traditionally as well as scientifically it is also proved. Uh, many of the researchers also work on the particularly on the phytochemistry of that ervalanata and they found that in the ervalanata there are potential chemicals they are leads to uh, dissolve the oxalate crystals particularly right so uh, it also increases the citrate level in our blood and due to that the renal calculi will be dissolved easily so uh, this is the main focus and uh, in, the, uh, in my paper, I also focused on the, what are the preventive measures to avoid the formation of kidney stone, right? So in this, uh, firstly, we must stay hydrated. Uh, we must eat citrus fruit because of that. Citrus is very, very, um, uh, it, it means uh, citrus shows uh, degrading effect on the kidney stone, right? If we, if we have an appropriate level of citric in our blood, it will does not allow to forming the crystals of calcium oxalate and that type of kidney stone, right? Uh, another precaution we must have to follow, we should eat less amount of animal proteins. We should limit our salt intake, right? And we have to get enough dietary calcium also that will be edible or it may be uh, digestible calcium. So simple calcium we should be uh, eat or consume. And lastly, we should eat less food content that having high amount of oxalate. So if we, if we avoid the, that type of salt, oxalate, calcium, and uh, this type, so we can prevent from the formation of kidney stone. Also in our blood, we can increase the citrate level. Or if, if we use this simple herb that is Ervalanata, so we can simply overcome to these disease, right? So uh, it, with these aims and uh, objectives, I focused on my this present paper. So that is very simple. To uh, this ervalanata has much more potential than the other herbs to prevent from these kidney stones, right? So uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Bisha, sir. Then after that, we are having Mahesh uh, Janilkar, sir, from uh, Professor. Uh, good morning, all of you. <coughs> Continue, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, my, myself, Mahesh Madhukar Janilkar, I'm working uh, in first year engineering department, Professor Ram Mege, College of Engineering and Management, Badnera. My topic for presentation is application of fuzzy linear programming approach for solving mixed product selection problem. Abstract of my paper is the modified SMF system, S curve membership function system is used in the real MPS problem, mixed product selection problem, this problem occurs in the production planning process where the decision maker plays an important role in making decisions in an uncertain environment. As a researcher, we are trying to find the best solution for the final decision maker. Yaskar membership function analyzed fuzzy linear programming production equipment using data actually collected from chocolate production companies and the problem of MPS incompatibility has been described here. The aim of this article is to find the best units of product with high satisfaction and nonsense is the main thing here. Since there are so many decisions to make the best unit of product table is defined in terms of insensitivity and satisfaction to find a solution with a high UOP level and a high level of satisfaction. Fuzzy outcome indicates that the high unit of product will not lead to a high level of satisfaction. The result of this work suggests that the best decision based on the negative impact on the fuzzy system of the mixed product selection 
in addition a high level of unit of product is achieved when the blur means uncertainty is low the following keywords i have used here linear programming uncertainty fuzzy constraint mixed product selection the non <clears throat> smf conversion function is used for problems related to fuzzy linear programming the function s from s curve membership function can be applied and tested for its effectiveness by applying pressure in this example the s yes function is applied to make a decision after binary such as the number of technologies and equipment of which mps is complex solution is obtained can provide the decision maker and the coordinator of the final implementation the wording described in this article is just one of three fps words that actually have an application the above fps term is considered to be the real life situation when it comes to making a chocolate data from this problem are provided in the database of chocoman company usa Chocoman manufactures chocolate bars, candies, wafers using the variety of ingredients and formulas. The goal is used to modify S function as a system to get the best unit of product through the FLP system. Actually, the result of this work suggests that the best decision is based on the negative impact on the fuzzy system of the MPS. In addition, high level of UOP are obtained when the uncertainty is low in this system. Means when blur is low in this. system i use this flp model this is the general model of classical linear programming maximum w equals to dy actually this is the standard formation such that dy less than or equals to c and y greater than or equals to 0 and i have used uh, the fuzzy formulation from this standard formulation this is the standard formulation and i have used this fuzzy formulation where <coughs> d is the objective function b is the number of matrix technologies and d is the variability of assets all these are complex here therefore an infinite number can be displayed so that the problem can be solved by the flp system and this flp system i have designed like this here the fuzzy mixed product selection products that can made by mixing different ingredients because mixed product selection means we have used here different kinds of chocolates that's why i have called it as mixed product selection mixing these different ingredients and using k type processing it is expected that the infrastructure will be massive there are also some restrictions by the retail department such as requirement for the product mix requirement for the main product line as well as the minimum and maximum qre for each product not everything that is needed in these circumstances is obvious it is important to achieve maximum unit of products and the satisfaction using the fuzzy linear programming method since the number of technologies and equipment changes is running high because these are there are, uh, will be a different technology and dif different equipments are also there the result of unit of product would be foolish because <clears throat> there are uh, different technologies and equipments uh, are running at high that's why it it would be a foolish flp problem customized in size 2 can be written maximize w is equals to summation l equals to 1 to 8 yl subject to summation l equals to 1 to 8 b star k l y l is less than or equals to c star k this is the standard formulations we have used here where y l is greater than or equals to 0 and l is equals to 1 to this 1 to 8 where b star k l and c star k l are the these are the fuzzy parameters actually i used these fuzzy resource variable here for this interval c k b less than c k less than c k c i have used this resource variable b c k <coughs> and <coughs> bck equals to c upon 1 plus d e to the power b ck minus ckb divided by ckc minus ckb by solving this resource variable equation we get c c star k equals to cbk plus this one c ck minus cbk upon beta and ln of means log of 1 by d c upon theta ck minus 1 this resource variable i have used here in my research so these are the fuzzy constraints the product materials equipments requirements are shown in the uh, below table <coughs> provide the mix size and use the required material to make the each product actually this these are the atoms and these are the fuzzy intervals for 1000 units milk chocolate uh, for 200 gram we will require uh, 450 to 575 gram of ingredients for milk chocolate 50 gram crunchy chocolates these uh, these are the mixed product 
मिक्स चॉकलेट क्रंची चॉकलेट चॉकलेट विथ नट्स चॉकलेट कैंडी एंड वेफर एंड दिस इज दिट दिस इज द रॉ मटेरियल पर किलोग्राम विल रिक्वायर वी हैव डिजाइन दिस दीज फॉर दी इंटरवल्स फॉर वन थाउजेंड यूनिट्स दैट मीन्स फ्रॉम सेवेंटी फाइव टू वन ट्वेंटी फाइव किलोग्राम for per kilogram we have used this choco we have used milk in kilogram also here 90 to 150 nuts 45 to 75 per kilogram there are two unclear barriers actually such as assess the equipment and restrictions on the capacity of the uh, equipments in the industry these barriers are inevitable for any object and property depending on the consumption of the property to trade and acquire property these selections are based on the flp resolution of chokoman industries the changes for the mps are defined as these are the <coughs> changes y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 y7 and y we have used in 1000 pieces 250 grams of chocolate milk in 1000 pieces 100 grams of chocolate milk the chokoman marketing department has issued the following restrictions product mix required large product 250 grams of any kind means any piece of 250 gram should not exceed 60% of uncertain value that is therefore we get please please move fast okay sir y1 yeah. less than or equals to 0.6 y2 y3 less than 0.6 y4 and y5 less than or equals to 0.6 y6 the required product line is the key actually here these are the mixing proportions these are the mixing proportions for material required per 1000 unit this amc means milk chocolate this cc means crunchy chocolate this is the nuts chocolate this is candy and this is wafer this is the fuzzy intervals for mixing proportions i have used here these are the facility usage for the product types these are the fuzzy intervals also uh, facility usage required per 1000 units these are this is the data i have used here and these are the optimal units of products with a satisfaction degree this satisfaction degree we will get for these numbers of units of product that means for 2 4 3 8 units satisfaction degree is only 7.562 and for 3 3 4 4 of units we will get satisfaction degree of 95.42 that means approximately nearly equals to 100 for 3 3 4 4 units the mps problem is solved using uh, matlab actually Well, whatever data i have collected uh, <clears throat> i have uh, found the result here by using matlab matlab and its lp application it provides complexity and a degree of satisfaction the lp application has two extras in addition to the non existent there is an output w star that means the best units of products and there are different vagueness values w star for different vagueness values there are units of products what the, the result shows that the units of product minimum is 2755 with a maximum of 303034 units it can be seen that when the understanding is between 0 to 1 because whenever there is a fuzzy uncertain we will use the results between 0 to 1 only the maximum value of w is 3034.9 is obtained by minimum value and similarly over 39 the minimum gain is 2755 units <coughs> the conclusion of this uh, research paper is the uh, project was to find the most effective unit of product for mps problems that have been identified here and smf escrow membership function was recently developed as a framework for the task of solving the above problem effectively the decision making process and its implementation will be easier if the decision maker and consultant can work with the analyst to get the best and most satisfactory result there are two more cases to consider in future work of the running technology that is not negative and that the dynamic sets are running and not complicated fs mathematical relationships can be developed here for mps problems to find the satisfying solutions the decision maker researcher and practitioner can apply the knowledge and experience to get the best result than this these are some references here <clears throat> thank you thank you very much sir if any question is there you can ask thank you sir uh after this sir after janulkar sir i would like to invite uh, dr mr tandare sir from department of zoology sri venkatesh arts commerce and science college jorga raja his topic is wetland conservation a case study on lonar crater india dr mr tandare sir good afternoon everyone tandare sir please today uh, we are discussing about 
presentation within time. I am audible. Yeah, yeah, you are audible, sir. But finish your presentation within time, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, yes, sir. sir. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Today we are discussing about the wetland conservations. A case study on this uh, lunar crater, India. Uh, everyone know the lunar is a uh, much more uh, sign as well as they just having a PS may maintain throughout the year. I also find out this lunar crater is uh, having a very uh, magic water. And uh, in last uh, two years ago, everyone can be attracted his attentions regarding to that lunar crater because of that uh, water is uh, turns toward the pink one. No doubt. Uh, in uh, 2007 and 2011, we already mentioned that the various uh, aligned bacteria also be present in that uh, crater one, so that maybe the number is increases out, so that their colorations might be drastically be changes out, so that we find out these colorations. Now, today we are discussing about that uh, lunar crater, its uh, geographical or geometrological uh, study. So, firstly, we are discussing about the bombardment of the various Earth. Uh, we find out the number of uh, crater as observed in throughout the earth. But the area of these uh, landmass, which are finding a uh, very successive one. In this uh, slide, we are observing the, the dry land glaciers as well as the ice sheets, desert one, mountain ones, and uh, another one area has also been there. But in a specific area, there is a impact crater. So the main objectives of this uh, impact creators are there. So there are creators uh, uh, is been impact uh, murder not to notice it properly. In large meteorite falls with the bright the flash as well as the thundering noise and leave a trails in the atmosphere. So if they hit the ground, the kinetic energy creates a spectacular explosions and leaves these craters. Somewhat smaller craters have the similar structures like the bowl, bowl shares and other ones. So uh, overall of that, we are just considering only the last 10 most impressive impact uh, craters, that is the Kali craters, uh, whose diameter is the near about 110 meters, another one, the Rotar Canon crater, then later uh, Tunivers crater, Swing craters, then uh, Alvilar craters, Wolf Care uh, craters. In along with that, that uh, Pingolhut crater is having a uh, 3,440 meters. It is the large views of diameter is there. Along with that, the Lunar crater having diameter near about 150 meters. Now, geomorphometry of the lunar craters is divided into the various uh, form that is the ejecta blanket crater, rims, uh, uh, escarpment, as well as the, we call it as the slope, then alumini fan, and then later the lake basin proper. This is the topographic map, map of that lunar crater. Either. Different satellitical map views which are just uh, giving here. Um, another one is that various sites which are to be recognized for the identifications of the uh, various uh, planktonic population as well as the water quality also. Then this uh, lake without uh, have the any outlet, so that, that uh, there are the three perennial fresh water uh, springs and the many seasonal streams are there. These lunar crater ecosystems is evolved in a unique way, so that uh, they have a relative regions, higher humidity levels in the basin, higher ground water level in the basin, and supply of the perennial springs. Salty aluminium is observed in, in the last uh, scene. We have to observe the aluminium. We have the various uh, salty. Uh, there. Different site we are considering here. Uh, just uh, the rings. Now, the site showing the algal blooms and the marcher places. We all know that it is spirulina is the dominant overall this uh, lunar crater one. That uh, plankton population will be enhances its number and due to their uh, formations, they get to produce the algal blooms. And if the algal blooms are floated on the surface of that water, then the so under these water molecules having the various uh, planktonic population is there. Uh, but the uh, 
air. So that uh, the planktonic population or diatoms can be dead and decay and uh, set at the bottom to, uh, uh, to produce such a uh, marshy places surrounding the two grain. Different uh, rodent opposites uh, is the is dominant for these various uh, features of Brachinus uh, fissa as well as the Pelicatelius quadratus, uh, then later Caratera, another one of the uh, very tropical Philodonilla species, first time they identified Dr. D.S. Davis, uh, he can who is. Then, yes, Kumnasubidhi. The natural cover is there, a is dominant one. Another one, slide, we are showing the, uh, again, diversity. Uh, number of migrated birds can be visited this uh, crater once. Various uh, uh, migratory birds uh, regularly visit in this uh, crater one. These are the various photographs which is taken by the Dr. D.S. Dabade, sir. So now, in shortly, we are moving toward the conclusion. Just conclusion is not uh, just uh, mentioning here. The conclusion is on the basis of number of planktonic population which is observed in this crater. Zooplankton, uh, specifically, we are uh, considering the uh, uh, brachinus species, that is the rotifer species, are uh, uh, domin dominant over this one. Another one is uh, spirulina algae is also much more dominant uh, in case of the blue-green algae. But uh, this ecological wonder, that uh, lunar crater is a uh, ecological wonder, so that we want to conserve this crater one. Number of pollutatory degrading activity continuously the done in this one. Uh, no doubt this uh, Ramsar 30 is considered as this uh, site as a Ramsar one, but in ancestor one, various all, already this activity are to be done, already to be done in this crater one. We are observing that annual fairs in Kamaljara TV uh, temple, then later rising activity, which is done here, bathing activity, in uh, that uh, crater as well as in uh, Dhara. So that the forest department also considering that crater is a uh, one to be just a uh, greenery one. So they just planted out the another one uh, uh, exotic uh, plant that is the Puripara Joliferia. That uh, Joliferia is overly uh, uh, just covered the whole uh, crater one. And it is uh, uh, may uh, cost about the uh, uh, eutrophications. Uh, now, the sir, please conclude within one minute. Yes, Andre, sir. sir, please conclude within one minute. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. After that, we carried out the various campaigning regarding to the uh, conservation of this uh, lunar crater one. Uh, every year, this uh, uh, DS Dabade, sir, and we are just uh, uh, taking this uh, lunar crater one. Uh, is happening, we consider or we uh, just collect the garbage which is uh, just observed in that Orwellian one. The cadet as well as the students can collect this uh, garbage and there is the formation of the various, uh, uh, we call it the uh, proper uh, handling of this uh, garbage and in our uh, uh, bore into the uh, dustbin. We have created this, uh, created this uh, dustbin. Uh, for uh, collecting this uh, type of the uh, material. Every year we are doing this activity continuously, but then later also I uh, requested to their uh, stakeholders as well as the uh, lunar um, uh, pilgrims to just uh, conserve this uh, creator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. Thank you, sir. After that, we are having Kavita and Kheda. From Department of Chemistry, Sri RLT College uh, of Science, Akola. And her topic is synthesis, characterization, and vector interpretation of the one tetra O benzoyl beta T glucosyl thioaryl 24 diethiocarbamide. Kavita M. Head. She is not available. Uh, next, we are having uh, RM Shinde, Department of uh, Biotechnology, Dr. P.D. Krishi University, Akola, and his topic is random UV magnet mutagenesis of uh, uh, Pseudomonas Siri CW202. RM Shinde. Yes, sir. Uh, Shinde, sir, please uh, conclude within the time. Yes, sir, sure.
सर स्लाइड्स आर विजिबल हेलो यस यस दे आर विजिबल ओके सर सो गुड आफ्टरनून वन एंड ऑल और माय ओरल प्रेजेंटेशन टॉपिक इज रैंडम गिविंग म्यूटाजेनेसिस ऑफ सुडोमोनास ट्रुजरी स्ट्रेन फॉर एनहांस्ड बायोडिग्रेडेशन ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल वेस्ट एसिडाइज सो एज वी नो दैट the increase use of these dyes in industry particularly these dyes are used extensively in textile industries and other leather industries also not all the dyes are absorbed by the product itself amount of uh, large amount of these dyes are get uh, lost through the waste outlet of the industries and these contaminated to the water uh, and possesses some hazards uh human health hazards lost to the aquatic diversity and also in addition in addition with that as the water crisis uh, water crisis is also becoming a major issue and this has limited uh, limited use of water is uh, need of a time along with that these kinds of pollution is creating some problems okay so uh, <clears throat> day by day increasing population has also lead to the contaminant uh, uh, demand of the healthy food and organic products as we know that in industry these azotides are used and the waste product is left outside these uh, waste water if, uh, if we know that uh, this water can be used for irrigation purpose by the unknown uh, persons or unknown farmers uh, in that area particularly so that has ultimately Uh, come to the our food channels and we get contaminated as we know that these azotides are carcinogenic carcinogenic and uh, this is re already reported by the european commission also and the use of uh, use of these dyes has uh, has already restricted or proposed to be restricted but still uh, companies are using this and uh, there is need to deconstruct these dyes so that if if, if after the deconstruction uh, they leave these dyes into the outlets and this is contaminated uh, into the this will ultimately uh, lead to the or involve into the rivers so there will not be the issue so in this particular study we tried to find out the particular strain bacterial strain which can degrade this uh, azoves dyes biologically in industry they uh, in some industries are based which uh, which treat this uh, waste inside their industry but they use the incinerator and this needs a uh, large uh, energy and expertise and also uh, some ashes will be produced that will be harmful but when we go for the bioremediation we can use some biological uh, organism to deconstruct this particular dye so that this will ultimately degrade that dye and the water will be uh, saved from uh, polluting so uh, for this we have uh, set some objectives and we have isolated some potential isolate and uh, we we got the result with the uh, for the degradation of this dye with the uh, isolated uh, rs2 sample but uh, the degradation was uh, taking some time so up to 4 to 5 days but we 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 were wish to uh, degrade this particular dye within just uh, 24 hours or up to the 48 hours so we went for the um, improvement of that particular strain so this improvement was done using the physical mutagenesis that is human mutagenesis so this was our plan of action and uh, this is this is what or the way we uh, we went for our experiment so we have first identified the rs2 sample and which was able to degrade the uh, these azodyes when uh, after this we have uh, improved this strain to maximize our degradation so we have set the uv into, uh, uv uh, mutagenesis so this was uh, this was done in this way the culture was subjected to the uv treatment for uh, different time intervals that is 20 minute 40 minutes 60 minutes and 120 minutes using the uv transmutator at a fixed level, uh, at a fixed and particular wavelength that is 260 nanometer so this nanometer at this nanometer this is uh, the uv uh, wavelength at which the dna get uh, mutated so that's why we use this particular uh, uh, wavelength so further uh, after the mutation we got the mutated cultures so uh, which was collected after the uh, at a fixed uh, time interval so we have checked this particular mutant 
for their uh, large activity or excess activity of lagase. So lagase is an enzyme which is a green catalyst, and that's why this green catalyst can be used. Um, this green catalyst can be uh, used for bioremediation. So that's why uh, these mutated cultures was tested along with our wild strain for their uh, maximum uh, for their ability to having the uh, large capacity of lacase enzyme so we have said different enzyme assay using different substrate like abds seringaldehyde and glycol and we came to the conclusion that uh, this degradation was achieved up to uh, of the 1% dye uh, of the 1% dye uh, using the rs1 and along there are the different uh, strains we were studying out of which the rs2 was um, found potential so uh, this wild strain was used um, for the further uh, was selected for the further uh, experiment or analysis. So, this, the, which was this strain? We identified this strain using the 16S RNA uh, gene sequencing. So, we first isolated the uh, the, uh, the DNA of the particular bacteria, then we sequence it. Uh, we, uh, then we uh, run the PCR with the 16S uh, primers and we uh, sent it for the sequencing. We got the sequenced and we uh, we identified the bacteria. Uh, to uh, against the database of NCBI. Then ultimately we came to the conclusion this bacteria is having the 90, 99.23% similarity to the Pseudomonas tuzeri bacteria. So this was the uh, this is the way uh, by which we named it, this particular bacteria which was having the ability to decolorize this dye and uh, to the uh, or that is the Pseudomonas tuzeri. So these bacteria were further improved for the uh, enhancement in the degradation. So uh, we have mutated that and the mutation study after the mutation study we checked for the lagase particularly uh, lagase enzyme which is uh, which is a green catalyst and which is uh, which play major role in degradation of this dye so we found uh, that at ph7 we got uh, 463 unit per liter uh, of this lagase activity compared with the 257.76 which was produced by the wild uh, while saying so maximum was achieved at ph4 which was uh, 4 499 unit per liter and um, whereas the wild strain was just uh, showing the activity to 63.52 uh, using the abds substrate we went for the another substrate to uh, check uh, at which uh, or with which substrate we can maximize this uh, production of lacase or production of lacase inside that particular bacteria. So we went for the seringaldehyde substrate and we got the maximum activity of enzyme, which was 1098 unit per liter, uh, which was produced by the mutant bacteria. Whereas uh, the wild strain was still uh, producing 213.2 unit per liter activity at pH 8. So uh, in this study, we found seringaldehyde as a base substrate, which can maximize the lacase and uh, which, which could ultimately uh, enhance the degradation of our uh, uh, dye. So another substrate was glycol. So we, we didn't find that much uh, increase in the activity, enzyme activity along with this glycol substrate. So uh, uh, after that, we went for the uh, optimization of particular temperature, uh, optimization of uh, this uh, degradation. So for that, we, uh, we have chosen 1% dye and uh, we have set the experiment where the wild and mutant were compared comparatively uh, inoculated with the wild and mutant strain. And we got the maximum degradation just after the uh, one day, which was 88.16% of this dye uh, with the mutant strain. Whereas uh, wild strain was taken, uh, was took the time uh, up to the five days and that was uh, after the five days, we got the 90% degradation, whereas the mutant shows the degradation up to the 98.36% uh, within just two days. So after that, we uh, we have analyzed the degraded water uh, by sending the sample to the nearest lab, and uh, uh, which is a BIS certified, certified lab, and and uh, their result shows that uh, these uh, the contaminated were under the BIS specification standard. So after that, the same water which uh, which was uh, degraded, we have chosen for the our uh, agriculture. Uh, whether we can use this uh, water for agriculture purpose, then we set the experiment of germination and pot experiment using the swabbing seed, and we got the um, very good results with the degraded water. Uh, uh, that is uh, with the wild uh, with the uh, with the tap water, uh, we got the 
so see here in this diagram you can see that uh, the control sample uh, and the degraded uh, water uh, in degraded water the soybean uh, plant height was increased and the leaf length was also increased and also the root length was also found increased so and also uh, in germination case we got the highest germination in degraded sample so here uh, in this um, uh, particular table you can see that degraded sample has shown the average stem line uh, stem length which was more than that of, than that of the waste water and the uh, waste dry water and the normal uh, tap water so degraded sample showed the maximum stem length average leaf length maximum breadth uh, in centimeter then average number of leaves also and average root length so this ultimately can lead to the uh, yield of the particular crop because this has the, the uh, these are the phenotypic uh, characteristics of the plant which will ultimately affect the photosynthesis and ultimately the yield of the uh, crop further we have said the uh, germination uh, experiment where we found the 80% germination in degraded sample so how this uh, this uh, this has happened because in normal water uh, it is found that up to 75% germination was observed but in degraded sample we found 80% uh, germination this is due to the increased content of nitrate as per the bis report so in that report uh, we found the nitrate content was after the degradation the nitrate content was somewhat higher so this nitrate and we use the nitrate as a fertilizer and that's why uh, this is our hypothesis that this uh, this may be due to the uh, this nitrate contained in the degraded water and that's why uh, we got this type of results so uh, finally uh, from this study we, uh, we come to the conclusion that this rs2 was the bacteria which was identified as a sudoma strixeri and uh, which found the 99.23% similarity that's why we named it as uh, sudoma strixeri we say, we have submitted these uh, the sequences of this bacteria into the ncbi databases so this will help the uh, different scientific community to uh, study uh, and this database can be available forever and the further the we improved this trend sudoma strixeri by using the immunogenesis and we uh, enhance the degradation of the azotized um and now the degradation of azotized within just two days so uh further we we came to the conclusion that at 35 degrees centigrade we got the maximum degradation we have said the experiment where we, we have checked uh, check from 28 degree to the 45 degree centigrade at which uh, particular temperature wavelength uh, temperature uh, we get the highest degradation so we found 35 degree centigrade at which the highest lackes percent uh, highest lackes activity was also found and degradation was also found so based on this experiment uh, uh, further we got the good results for uh, for uh, pod experiment and uh, ultimately we can reuse this water so from this study we can um, we can say that these uh, azotized water can be reused for the irrigation purpose ultimately uh, if the industry will utilize this our uh, product Uh, further if uh, further we are going to uh, develop it and uh, uh, so if if they will adopt this uh, this kind of bioremediation technique then they can it themselves uh, treat the particular water uh, in industry itself and then they can release into the uh, different uh, rivers or other water bodies so uh, that is the way they they used to so uh, this uh, this can also be this study can this type of study can also be helped uh, to reduce down the water pollution ultimately Uh, can save the aquatic system can uh, save human health uh, as uh, this carcinogen cannot be uh, be there in inside uh, live inside that water bodies and uh, further uh, already our pm has uh, uh, say that this namami gang uh, gange uh, kind of uh, product uh, projects are also running so we can uh, we can avoid the contamination of this particular uh, rivers or our rivers Uh, by releasing this dyed water so after treating before uh, uh, if you use this bioremediation technique so this is all about my study and uh, thank you so these were the previous study uh, which we referred for our uh, projects thank you so much thank you shinde sir now i would ask uh, um, participants to if anybody of you have uh, any remark on this uh, conference uh, please give it uh, we are having uh, umesh tupe sir who is going going to give a remark uh, on this conference 
डॉक्टर उमेश तुपे सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर आय एम ऑडिबल आय एम ऑडिबल येस सर येस ओके थँक यू सर गुड आफ्टरनून एव्हरी वन आय डॉक्टर उमेश तुपे फ्रॉम आर्ट्स सायन्स कॉमर्स कॉलेज सिसुंडी नाशिक आय एम हॅपी टू शेअर माय व्ह्यू अबाउट दिस कॉन्फरन्स द व्हेरी नाईस कॉन्फरन्स ऑर्गनाइज बाय ऑर्गनायझिंग कमिटी it's really very amazing conference i request to the principal and organizing committee of this conference please organize such a type of conference in each camp for the overall development of student as well as research scholars the very important point of this conference is not in this conference not only one subject is considered but also all the branches of science are, is, are considered this is a very important point I again congratulations to all organizing committee as well as principal of research college thank you thank you sir thank you very much thank you tope sir after this uh, i would like to uh, invite uh, dr nb umbarkar sir for his vote of thanks dr umbarkar sir thank you sir good morning sorry good afternoon one and all it is gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this e conference today's e conference was full of knowledge and innovative things we take this golden opportunity to present vote of thanks to the respected resource person dr pm quinkar for graciously accepting our invitation and delivered a wonderful lecture on nanomaterials thank you sir we express our sincere thanks and gratitude to dr s d delikar today we had the opportunity to hear you and this is definitely encouraging us in our future events thank you sir i extend my gratitude to dr c u murade to take out time from his busy schedule and to grace the event thank you sir i also wish to express my gratitude to dr a s aswar we are truly honored to have you sir a special mention to our honorable principal dr j b devde being the catalyst that inspired us to do our best and stand as a pillar of power we are all inspired by your great words thank you sir it's my pleasure to thank mr j borse coordinator of this e conference mr k f chelke and mr k m ranjalkar convener and co convener of this e conference mr g d kanade dr aryan khade and dr ed adav organizing secretary of this e conference and all organizing committee members also i would like to thank dr s s chobe and dr milin chinkhede as the chair persons for both sessions i also thankful to my fellow participants faculty members and non teaching staff who enthusiastically participated in today's e conference also i would like to thank dr umesh tupe for his remark once again i thank one and all whole heartedly with the permission of principal dr jb devde and president of this event i declare the end of this e conference note for participants certificate of this e conference will be provided within a week thank you